Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. Let me just make sure. Yeah, we're there. Okay, good. Testing. Can everybody hear us out there? Let us know. Oh, actually, hold up one second. I'm not hearing you guys. Are you guys talking? Sorry, oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm like, uh, <laughs> right, hello, everyone. Good to see you. Good to see everyone. All right. Welcome in, everyone. Mello's here. Summer's here. Airtra, how you doing, Airtra? It's good to see you. Welcome in. Mel, thank you for the raid earlier. Um, let me just say hello to everyone. Doom. Who else are we missing? Make sure we're not missing anyone. Michelangelo, good to see you. Wendy's in, and it's very late for her. Good to see you, Wendy. So good to see you. All right. Hey, Chill. What's going on? Nice shirt, AV, Mel says. Mel loves your shirt. <laughs> I love the shirt. That's a great shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode two of the After Dark with LD and Friends podcast. Uh, it's basically dedicated to the long dark. We have streamers and viewers coming in. Uh, next month, we're going to have, hopefully have some viewers coming in to next month. Right now, we have all streamers again right now. Um, and I'm going to try to work on getting, uh, so, well, I'll tell you about the future guests towards the end let's not do it now i'll tell you about some people that i have working on coming in okay all right so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our guests tonight and our guests we're going to start uh, in the upper left corner we'll start with acidic virus uh better known as av a wonderful gentleman a great streamer and an awesome dude um say hello to acidic virus and to the right is captain picard the Captain Picard, awesome, another awesome person. Uh, hasn't streamed in a little while yet. He's been very busy uh, with his home life, um, but he's a great guy. It's nice to have him in. He knows a lot about the game. He's a great player and a great streamer and a great guy and a good supporter of the community. So he's here with us tonight. Uh, to the lower Everyone. lower left, we have the wonderful Tina Bug, who everybody knows Tina Bug. Say hello to Tina Bug. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> And Hope everyone's having a wonderful evening. In the lower and the lower part of the screen is the wonderful Sweet Reverie, who is my co-host tonight. She's going to help me interview the guests, and she's going to partake in this wonderful podcast. So, good evening, everyone. Everybody, say hello. Hello. What is up? How you guys doing? Before we start, can everybody hear everyone in chat? Could you please put up in chat that you can hear everyone? Okay. Before we get going. As soon as I get a confirmation, we'll keep going. <laughs> Tina looks amazing. Yes, we can. Excellent. It's 2.05 for me, too. I know it's very late for some of you, and so glad to see you in. Um, what we're going to do also is I'm going to, each episode, I'm going to try to flip-flop the time zones so the people in Europe can get a better chance of be earlier. It'll be later for us in the States. But or be earlier for us in the states, but it would be good timing for you guys. Hey, Amazon is in. How's it going, April? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Okay, all right. So let's get started. Um, we're gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna get let the um, guests tell a little bit about themselves, introduce themselves. We're gonna start up in the upper left corner again with acidic virus. Av, could you say something about yourself and introduce yourself to us, please? Sure. So. Uh, real name Carl, uh, live in England, in the UK, uh, 38, um, known as Acidic Virus, AV, Acidic Virus, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> um, Wolf Rider, King of the Keg, you know. Yeah, we like Wolf Rider and King of the Keg too, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, gaming, been a gamer for like 25 years, been playing The Long Dark for probably coming up to a year and a half, been streaming for two and a half years um got two kids two boys which i game with sometimes when they can be bothered if they're not making you know playing with their mates awesome. uh and i work in retail full-time so part-time streamer unfortunately yeah so many games so little time right <laughs> that's it that's it that's yeah. it El cap would you like to take it over now yeah i'm the captain picard uh my real name is jay and I grew up playing video games, so I've probably been playing for 25 years or so, um, 36. And I worked for an internet uh, company full-time. Haven't been able to stream in a 
while, but hope, hopefully we can be back here soon. And uh, before we go on, as I should have said before, you don't have to say your your name if you don't want to. Just to let okay. you know that. Okay. I should have said that before, but... Most everybody knows my name. Already, yeah, okay. So. I, I knew your name was Jay, too. But like I said, if you don't want to disclose, you just you disclose only what you want to. T Tina Bug, you know, you next. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tina. Well, Tina is my real name. I live in the Midwest, and... I work in the insurance industry. I um, am an underwriter, so I get to decide about insurance for people. And it's pretty boring, really. I have two kids, and um, I was born in Alaska. That's a fun fact That's about cool. me. <laughs> so I want to go back someday. I was, um, according to my mom, I was born at 2 a.m. under an aurora borealis. So someday we'll go back and see that. I haven't. I think we moved when I was three months old, so never saw one in real life yet. Gosh, I wonder what Tina's name is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Like, my real That's name is funny. Portia Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amy. How you doing? Good to see you. Welcome in. Okay, uh, sweet. Uh, you know, you know, you're gonna have to do this on all the podcasts. So you're gonna have to, you know, introduce yourself again and. I don't even remember who I am right now, so no, I'm just kidding. Uh, my name is Sweet Reverie, a uh, fairly new streamer. Uh, I would probably classify myself as a variety streamer right now. Uh, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of everything. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There's really nothing to it. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm... Long Dark Forever, of course, David, everybody usually knows me as David, uh, LD. Um, I am relatively new to gaming, to be honest. I've only been gaming about six, seven years. I never had it growing up. I only started getting into it. My kids started getting into it. And the only thing I could tell you about myself is funny how I got to Twitch was that one time my kids were telling me, Dad, you know, did you ever hear a Twitch? I said, no, what's that? And they said, well, you go in and you can watch people play games and you can chat and stuff. I said, why would I want to watch somebody else play a game? That sounds, you know, boring and stuff. Well, it was funny. They said, you know, they talked me into it. I finally went on and look at me today where I'm at. Now it's like, it's like part of my life. It's insane. Anyway, I've been gaming a very short time. I've been playing Long Dark for, I see like the middle of 2017 like towards the end of 2017 but i've been playing like every day uh since then i have a lot of hours in the game but i'm not as good as i should be i mention that all the time i'm not as good as the amount of hours i have <laughs> so it's only because i didn't think about playing the hard difficulties until much later i was i was like always oh, a stalker player that's my mode i love playing stalker because i love playing um the game for that fun aspect of dealing with the wolves and all that stuff but yeah that's me all right so shall we continue on with the format what we're going to do is our normal format we did last time and it's going to be um we're going to have a series of questions we're going to ask the guests uh sweet and i are going to take turns asking these questions and basically they're um they're categorized into uh game knowledge so the, the questions that have re require more game knowledge were left to me and the ones that were more fun type um generalized questions were left to sweet so um we're gonna let sweet take the floor with the first set of questions so sweet whenever you're ready you can direct them to whoever you want to start with last time we did an order but i don't know how you want to do it this time i'll just follow yeah, whatever I think, you decide i think doing that same order is good like that uh, like keeps a it clock. organized yeah yep okay okay all right, so that means you're up first, Davey. Ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the first question, pretty uh, pretty simple. Um, how did you find out about the Long Dark? Um, what inspires you to play, and what keeps you coming back? Uh, so Long Dark, one of those games that popped up on Steam. Uh, I stuck it on my wish list, which is generally my thing of, well, this looks like an interesting game. I'll stick it on the wish list. If it comes up on sale, then I might buy it. Uh, so I think I bought it like two years ago in the sale. Uh, hadn't played it. Uh, we were already streaming by that point, but we were doing more platform style games when I was streaming back then. So it was kind of like on the to-do list. Um, I love survival games, uh, like post-apocalyptic type games. Uh, so like a massive Fallout fan. 
uh, those sort of things. Uh, and then one day, I think I'd finished the game that I was playing and I decided that I would boot up The Long Dark. Um, and I've been addicted ever since. Like we pretty much 90% of what we play is The Long Dark. Um, <laughs> what brings me back is like every run is different. Like I'm surprised that the permadeath wasn't such an issue in the beginning yeah. mm. you just get if you die or for me personally anyway uh as soon as you die it's like oh there's an exciting new run you know no two runs are ever the same yeah. there's uh, a whole host of different possibilities mm. and personally i love the beginning i like the struggle in the beginning i like to be challenged so uh for me looking for the key pieces uh going to key places getting the better gear and building up to that that's what I enjoy about the game, and that's what brings it back. Uh, obviously, we do stupid challenges as well, which I don't last very long in, so we get to do that bit all the time, which is great. Yeah. It's fun for me. <laughs> well, yeah, and we're definitely going to get to to talk about challenges a little bit later, so that'll be kind of a fun topic, because I know how big you are into those. Um, so what about you, Kat? What, uh, how'd you come to find Long Dark? So I got Long Dark on console on the Xbox, like in alpha or beta release, when it was like a super small game. And what attracted me to it was I grew up in like similar areas, like in the mountains. So like to challenge yourself and not have to actually put your life on the line is awesome. In that type of sense, I quit playing it. I played it for probably six months at that time, and then I didn't play it again until 2019 or so, I'd say. And I have to kind of piggyback off of AV with like the I've never made it to 500 days. I have files that I could do it with, but I sometimes get bored and mm -hmm. just start over because it's the parts the funnest. Yeah. Starting out in, in situations is absolutely awesome kind of building your way up from the from the ground absolutely mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of what Sorry. i struggle with sometimes is you know i'm trying to put my time in trying to get everything uh with my badges and sometimes i just get bored because it's kind of like it's too easy but i'm still trying to get used to everything so i i feel that for sure so i always want to start a new run <laughs> I love starting new runs. It's my favorite thing about the game, to be honest with you. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. All right, Tina, you no. are next. <laughs> well, I stumbled across the game completely on accident. So I used to play video games when I was in college, and all of that came to kind of a halt when I had kids. And I didn't really have time to play because I, shockingly, am a soccer mom and... I'm always on all of the clubs and all the boosters and, you know, we just never have time. <clears throat> but then the pandemic hit and suddenly there were no more booster club meetings. There were no more senior class stuff. There were no more, you know, no more volunteering, none of, the, none of that. And I wasn't at work anymore. So I was just at home and my son, we have an Xbox and just before I got my PC, and <clears throat> we have Xbox pass and to find a way to connect better with my son, I decided that I would start learning more about the video games that he was playing. So he was playing Fortnite and he was playing Apex and you know, he was playing, what is that soccer game with the car where you're like, somebody knows what I'm talking about. Because Rocket you're- League. Soccer yes, with Rocket the car? Yes, oh, Rocket yes. League? <laughs> yes. <laughs> see, see? And so, <laughs> So I got in with my son and we played a couple of games together. Uh, for example, Fortnite, we played together, I think twice, twice, because mom sucks, right? Um, so we never played together again, but then he was finding other games that we could kind of play together or I was enjoying watching him play. And um, the Long Dark came up on Game Pass for free and he started playing it. And I was like, wait, I like this game. <laughs> This one's really kind of cool. And so he's like, fine, I can set it up for you to play it, but we can't play it together. And he set me up, I think, on Voyager. And mom had to learn how to use the controller appropriately, right? And mom died. 
on Voyager and mom was freaked out by the wolves. She didn't like the wolves or the bears. She was like, this is not Those cool. This is not wolves. cool at all. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> totally hated it. Um, didn't hate the game. I hated the wolves and the bears, right? Right. So I started to um, play on <clears throat> Pilgrim and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. My son was like, don't give up, mom, you can get better. We played through Winter Mute and he beat the bear for me the first time we played through because he was like, mom, I can't tell you how to do it. You suck. I'm just going to do it for you. <laughs> I'm like, fine, rude, but fine. So he did. <laughs> and then I went back and I did it myself. Um, <clears throat> so then I started playing, uh, like I said, on Pilgrim and loved it, started exploring the maps and I just loved the immersion and I loved the beauty. And I, like I said earlier, I was born in Alaska and I love snow. Snow is literally one of my absolute favorite things. Yeah. And I love nature and I love immersion and being in as an extrovert was kind of hard for me. I was also going through a hard time in my life at that point in time and I became depressed and the game kind of captured how I felt, you know, alone in this vastness wandering around, but it was beautiful. And so I could get into it and escape and kind of lose myself. And it was really beautiful to get lost in it. Um, and then I died on my pilgrim run at like 300 and some days because I got stuck between two logs in Milton. Oh, oh so. no. <laughs> so then we went back to Voyager and Stalker and decided, hey, we need to learn how to play this game because we love yeah, this game. That's you know? it. And yeah. yeah, that was it. That's that what I it. try to tell people too. I say, it's, it's nice to, you know, I play pilgrim to learn the maps and stuff, but the, really the crux of the game is learning how the predators work. I know how do the yeah. rules work because yeah. there's no way you're going to be able to progress at all unless you get your feet wet and deal with the wolves. And like we all die, we still all die. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the best. It, it's funny me saying the best part of the game. The best part of the game is, of course, the survival. But, you know, when you get to the death and you learn something, that's mm -hmm. really what you say, yeah, boy, absolutely. I guess I'm not going to do yeah. that again kind of thing. So it's awesome. All wonderful stories. It's great. And then it reminded yeah. me that I like video games. So I don't only play The Long Dark now. So there's that. Wait, there's other games other than The Long Dark? <laughs> yeah. You must tell me Subsistence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play them as often, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trumpet master or trombone master. There you go. Trombone oh, channel. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I'm telling you, that is such an interesting game. I could not stop laughing the first probably 30 minutes. It's that very I've interesting. Listened to it. <laughs> hey, it's hey. Stupid and funny. AV said that he was practicing the dance. I just want you to know that, sweet. AV said he's <gasps> practicing the dance. Oh, my God. <laughs> We need that dance. <laughs> okay. I'm well, sorry. I, that was, those were really good stories. Uh, very interesting to see the different ways uh, everybody kind of discovered the game. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to go on to this. Uh, so AV, uh, what difficulty level are you most comfortable with and why do you prefer that particular level? Uh, I guess I would say Interloper Plus is the level that I play on. So either an Interloper game that's got some sort of restrictions, be it like maybe Dead Man with no condition recovery, or you know, I I personally select some things that I can't do. So I can't eat meat, or I can only eat fish, or we can't use the basic tools. Right. Um, kind of spice it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we're venturing more into sort of Nagoa territory as well and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, other sort of restrictive challenges where you have to do a certain thing maybe by a time or last a certain amount of time. Um, and that's that's purely because the game has always spoken to me as uh, I, I'm terrible that I don't really... I feel bad that I don't appreciate the beauty of the game as much. Whenever I look at the game um, and whenever I'm playing it, I feel... You know, to me, it's the challenge, it's the working out how to do this, how to do that. And uh, my progression through the game, because I started on Wintermute, David, David was the first person that came in and spoke to me as a YouTube yeah, somewhere. Yeah, was out great. There. I remember the yeah. first day meeting you, man. It was awesome. 
it's me playing along with me, not having a clue what I'm doing. And David comes in and uh, he's like talking to me. There's this guy called Long Dark Forever. I was like, you must play this game a bit. And he's like, yeah, I've got like yeah, four yeah. hours. And so I'm like, wow, this must be a great game. So like for me, it's always been like the progression, like going to, to Voyager, start on Voyager, Stalker, first Interloper, first Tournament. You know, and then I think I think going from like Interloper and doing the tournament, uh, David's first tournament that I did, which is the second one he's done, uh, it really tested my metal, and I really had to practice to level up my game. And now we just keep trying to do things that level up our game. And you know, some of the challenges we attempt are probably out of my uh, out of my uh, out of my zone, but I like to be pushed and to try and get better at the game. Uh, so yeah, that's really why I like play at that level. And for those of you who were not here for that um, tournament, he lost that tournament by one hour. One yeah. outdoor hour. Mm, mm. Yeah, that was really he amazing. He killed it. <laughs> yeah. No, I killed it second. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was really weird because I remember you in the stream saying, do this, do that, to try to get them to waste time. And I remember that. It was yeah, so funny. If I mouth shut, then I probably would have won. I kind of ended up handing Rich on. The, yeah, uh, it was Rich on, yeah. But, yeah. You know, it's all fun. I mean, like, we're all, we're all friends. And, yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about this community is, is, like, how, like, all the streamers interact and support each other and we mm. share viewers. So. It was while I would joke with him or in other people if we're in a tournament setting because I'm a little bit competitive. Um, really, I just want everyone to have fun and do their best anyway. And if I get beaten, I get beaten. It's fine, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say you were underselling yourself. You're a pretty, pretty dang good player. Yeah. So, yep. <laughs> cool. we're all and hard on ourselves, though, aren't we? We're all we're always dissecting our gameplay over everyone else's and. I think that um, I think that we all have to kind of work on that because I think we all do a great job. And the whole point of the game, like we've talked about before, is learning your mistakes. And as long as you don't give up, then you're winning. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. The other thing is, it's really it funny. Fun. Sometimes when you see in chats, when I go in the chats, it's like, so how are you doing? We say, well, I'm alive. That means I won. I'm winning. I'm still alive. Exactly. So that's always a good exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> you know? You're not sitting in a corner all beat up. You're you're continuously mm. trying and you're not, you know, you're not exactly. saying screw it and leaving the game. Exactly. So that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. All right, Cap, what about you? What, uh, what about your long, dark journey? So... I started out playing on, oh, Voyager, probably, and then I jumped straight to Interloper. Now I'd rather play, for whatever reason, I really enjoy just Outer Loper. Like, just not going in buildings, just living in caves. I couldn't even tell you what's so appealing about it. I don't, I just like sleeping outside all the time. Like, That's awesome. the savage in you. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a challenging aspect for sure. Mm. So I get I get the appeal. But like Nogoa is too it's too much. That's too much for me right now. And so I do feel like if I work more on outer loper because there's less resources overall, that I might be able to get up to to Nagoa's level. Mm -hmm. I like to challenge myself. Uh, but I also don't always want to be like, like you said, like somebody said, beat up in the corner. Like sometimes it's just brutal. Yeah. Right. You're kind of too hard of a level and you're not really ready for it. it it's brutal and you're not going to give up. But I do like to, to be like comfortable. Um, AV mentioned it a, a bit. The, the, oh, I am so, I'm so sorry. I have something not muted that's probably making me echo. Uh, the scenery, like the scenery to me, for being the type of game it is, I don't, I don't think I've played a, a game like Red Dead Redemption's awesome. All these games are awesome, but to me, like Long Dark is the top, like for scenery, and it, it's not like it's uh the best graphics in the in the world, you know. Just the painted scenery is 
is just so beautiful. Absolutely. But living outside, living outside, sleeping outside, like I like to just like sleep by rocks and like take chances. Mm. Am I just gonna die while I go to sleep and and that sort of thing? But yeah, outer out loper has got to be the, my my number one right now. Nice. And I'm it's sorry. Difficult. On on what difficulty level did you say? Uh, interloper, interloper, but interloper, okay. interloper okay. plus, okay. interloper oh, plus. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. duh. Outer interloper, but basically, I, <laughs> oh yeah, I just don't yeah. go into buildings. Yeah, basically, yeah. interloper plus was you know, yeah, plus, dead man or honest, not not necessarily dead no go, but like dead man or you know outer loper, loper things like that is usually um right. loper plus. <clears throat> yeah, my biggest oh, downfall right. is my map knowledge. Not I help outer loper helps with that a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I struggle a little bit with the map knowledge. I just, it all comes with experience, you know, just keep playing and playing and playing and eventually you'll just remember it all. <laughs> so I, I probably only have about 1500 hours in the game, which is still a lot, but yeah, yeah. always a lot to learn. All right, Tina, what about you? What is your preference? Uh, right now, Loper. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're in Loper right now, and we enjoy Loper. It was a little rough getting into Loper for us, but um, <clears throat> we are enjoying. I am enjoying it. Excuse me. Gonna try to go uh, here soon, not for just for fun, really. Actually, because yeah. <laughs> we do need to master Loper. I think our personal best on Loper right now is forty nine days. So, but we do enjoy Loper. I, oh my gosh, why do I keep saying we? I really do enjoy Loper a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Absolutely. And I don't know, I'm so, I don't know why I prefer it necessarily other than I am pushing myself to get to know it better. And I do, I play Sloper. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know, I get distracted and sometimes if, if I go too fast, I will forget to do something very important, and that's what kills me. You know, for mm. example, the last death, I had a torch out, and I'm like, ooh, I don't see a wolf around. I'm just going right down over here. I'll light the torch when I get down there so I can, you know, get the deer meat. And wolf came around the trailer, and I'm like, damn it, I should have lit the torch. I know. I know these things. It's just <laughs> sometimes, I don't know, I get, you know, Distract distracted. You. Yes. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. if you're streaming, I can definitely see why, because you're not just focusing on the game. You've also got this, uh, you know, you're sensing your chat on your other screen or however you got it set up and you you want to keep up with them and make sure they're not ignored. And that takes away from your game. And so I definitely understand for sure. Yeah, right, that, that's David, great. It is your turn. Um, I would say interloper plus myself um i do love to play and i kind of on uh, well i'm like a little bit like what cap was saying i i like to challenge myself too but i like to have the challenge but then have like little spots of breaks in between so you can like breathe a little bit and kind of you know recover a little bit and then you know go for the you know hard but like the go is a constant it's just a constant nag and that's the, the part that as much as I enjoy playing it, I, after a while, I'm like, oh, God, I just can't do this. It's too stressful kind of thing. You know, it's not like and that's, at that point, it's not challenging yourself. It's challenging your, your sanity at that point <laughs> for me. But, yeah, I, I I would say interloper, interloper plus. But before that, like, you know, wait, I was a stalker person for a long time. And I still love stalker. Right, Packer? You know, Packer's going to hate me saying that, but it uh, doesn't care. That is is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sweet? I know that you, you're you a Voyager person, but I know that you've been regionally yeah. bright branching out, haven't you, too, as well? Um. Well, I actually, I've been taking a little bit of a break from the long dark recently. I've uh, been kind of just focusing on... Cloud. Uh, yeah, my Final Fantasy game. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, I, I was starting to feel a little burnt out from between watching streams and then playing it myself, and I didn't want to get burnt out, so I just kind of took a step back from from playing it. Mm. Um, so I'm still working on Voyager right now, but I am definitely in the near future trying to plan for, like, a step up, either whether it be Stalker or Interloper. Mm -hmm. I haven't decided yet, but sure. Um, I, I find myself 
with my Voyager runs and, and yes, plural, because I think I have two or three, um, I get it to a certain point where I've just, I've got so much set up that it, it's almost a little bit boring and I want a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm trying to get more experience with the Predators and Voyager so that I can use that knowledge to, to move myself up basically. Cause I would like a little bit more of a challenge with the loot for sure. So. Excellent. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. I okay. Jumped, I jumped from Voyager to the Loper just because somebody told me I would develop bad habits. Like if, if I wanted to play on a hard level, that's the only reason I went out. If I was happy playing Voyager, to be honest. Well, yeah. I mean, the bad habits, here's the thing. As you get better at the game, you have to, I guess it's, you have to develop this kind of thing where you can switch yourself from playing up here and down here and it's like i try to tell people like i don't like this level because there's too much loot and i'm like well don't pick it up you know what i mean nobody yeah. says you have right. to pick it up right, right? right. so it's exactly. like right so you want to play the level mm -hmm. that you you like but because of you know the loot you don't you you look down on it and it's really it has nothing to do with that it's really just and i agree like stalker just has too much loot i mean if they just lowered it it would be much more challenging it would be it would really be a progression from stalker to interloper a little bit better you know what my thing is they should have introduced the bow and stalker rather than waiting to interloper to be uh, bow. Yeah. you know that's, that's that that's would huge. help people a lot better that would be a better transition in my opinion yeah that's kind that's of what biggest, makes me the hesitate biggest. with interloper is the fact that you know your guns are taken away you have to learn the bow mm. and there's no real rush for the bow in voyager mm. unless you're finding it somewhere randomly in the world you're not really in a rush to get to the forge to make it because you've probably right. found a gun by then yeah so and, yeah, it, and it's a simple thing like if i play if i want to play a stalker run usually i do them personally i'll i'll just you go for the bow at that point because i prefer the bow anyway but you know, it, then it makes your stalker game a little bit harder. It's more like you can make it harder if you just be thoughtful and kind of be creative and make it that way. And don't just do what the game gives you kind of thing. That's kind of how do that. You can do that in Voyager yeah. too. Yeah, exactly. Thank you can you do that in Voyager Lord. too. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, do. Yeah, I was that... just relating to Sweet. Like I love Voyager. I love Voyager too. Voyager is a great mode, and that's actually the way the game was intended to be played originally. Yeah. Originally, mm -hmm. right, was Voyager, because it even says in the description of the game, it says the most balanced level, the most balanced between danger, right. between you know danger and uh, that's really good. I do have to remind myself though. You did bring up a good point a minute ago. I do have to remind myself. I don't have to pick up the stupid loot if I don't want. If don't I don't need to. it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to more focus on surviving off of, you know, the deer and the wolves and everything versus mm. picking up, you know, all the processed foods and stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Maybe I'll do that from now on. That's, that's it. So. It's hard. It's all the hoarders within us, right? It's yeah, hard exactly. to sit there and say, it totally yeah, it's, we're, I think we're all a little <laughs> bit guilty of that, right? <laughs> I think we're all, and it's really I funny. Mean, it's like if it's right there, why not take it, right? But you can't, you can't take the whole thing. I always with say, it. you know why what, you can always come you back and get it, right? You can always come exactly. back and get it. Exactly, yep. If you ever need it, you can always come back and get it. Or build a stone cache, bring them all the stone, and put it all in there, and then you don't have to come back to all the locations again. You know, it's one of those things. True. But... Great. All right, so is it my turn? It is. <laughs> all right. Okay, let's move on to my questions. Okay, we'll start with AV in the upper left corner there. Can you share some funny moments about the game with you or someone else? Um... Sure, I guess the funniest moment was probably Wolf Rider. Some <laughs> people have seen the clip from that. Um, if you haven't, um, we came across a wolf. We were in Ash Canyon, um, and we were spamming spawns uh, for, for, I think it was a great bear hunt. Mm. Um, but instead of passing time, I would try and kill Astrid quickly. So Ash Canyon is quite, I find quite funny if you kind of like um, jump down to near where anglers is uh where the wolves are 
uh, just to get killed. Uh, we did that, and we landed kind of like we must have landed within like the the vicinity of what was uh, one of the wolves, and it didn't attack us or anything. It was just walking around kind of normally. So we, so I was just sort of like walking around, following this wolf, kind of looking like I was on it. Um, and then we got aggroed by another wolf. So we were walking towards this other wolf, and I was like, "On the wolf rider, fear me!" And like, this <laughs> wolf came up, and then he got scared and ran away. And <laughs> we were still just walking around on the wall. Uh, so that's probably the funniest. Um, I guess we had a glitch deer in um, FM by uh, Spenny's. Uh, there's a funny, I've discovered there's like a, that ridge, that little hill as you're looking out of uh, Spencer's. There's a, there's a small, on that hill, that area, like the wildlife, be it deers or wolves, act really strangely there. Uh, and we came across a deer that was just stood there. Like it didn't move, it just stood. And we went right up to it. We walked all the way around it. And it just literally stood there for hours and hours and did nothing until we got an aurora and then it despawned. <laughs> so that on top of deaths, my deaths are quite funny if I fall. Like if I'm goating or something, I'll be like halfway through a sentence and then suddenly Astrid drops and I'm just kind of like, yeah, we're just... <laughs> I do, I do want to just point out real quick. Um, I was still really... Ooh new to your uh, channel it was probably one of the first couple streams i watched and that happened and i just about died laughing and i remember the clip um i can share it i actually shared the uh, the mm -hmm. wolf rider one mm -hmm. but that is that is quite a funny clip <laughs> yeah i think that was uh, i think i was doing phoenix rises which is uh, ash canley only ash canyon. yeah it was ash canyon yep <laughs> I try to go down to homesteaders instead of using the rope and i was like i've never done this but we're not great at gating so like, i've never tried to gate this before let's try and do this so we're trying to find our way down and i think we overcommitted somewhere and suddenly we're like i'm like yeah we're doing really good we're on our pb we're in great stead great health and then suddenly whoosh straight down yeah. oops it hurt the long again. dark heard your confidence it said no not today I mean, honestly <laughs> it is my arrogance that kills me in the long dark nine times out of ten I'm like, yeah, we're fine doing this. No, but I know what I'm doing. You know, we'll do this, and then no, no, we screw up. In fact, I... he has a clip that's talking about having the conk confidence because we were talking with Conky, <laughs> and it, you know, having the confidence of good friends, you know, helps him play better, and he dies oh. in the middle of the explanation. <laughs> Another great clip on his channel. <laughs> if you have the t if you have the clip handy, Tina, feel free to post it if you like. If you have it handy. No. I okay. <laughs> I can get it though. I mean, I can do That's that. That's right. They can also go to AV's channel and get it there That's as well. Just get my channel, sure. this clip. Uh, just I think what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do is really. I can combine actually combine these the the, the these two questions here actually, then kind of in the same vein um let's just add to that and can you tell me also what your funniest and wackiest game glitch is uh, av you can continue with that question and we'll combine yeah, sure. the two questions yeah i mean the one that i think stands out the most i mean again those of you that have seen me do the great bear hunt we seem to be the most unluckiest person with glitchy bears mm -hmm. uh we've had all sorts of different bears glitching in different ways i think the funniest one was again in ash canyon um the bear was asleep in the passageway so we threw a stone at it to try and wake it up because we needed to kill it and it just slowly starts rising up the wall <laughs> like literally floats up till it gets to like the ceiling and then like kind of gets sucked in to the wall until its feet are just sticking out and then we threw a stone at it and then its feet moved and it disappeared and it was just in the wall and i was like it was definitely hey. perfect for some kind of halloween theme creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's probably the funniest glitch i've seen that hasn't resulted in me dying so we'll, we'll put that under under funny yeah and there's a clip of that too <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm trying to find all these clips, but it's. I have I'll one. I'm distracted. <laughs> I have one while I'm thinking about it before I forget about it. Um, I I would say one of the weirdest and funniest things that uh, wasn't funny at the time when it happened. I was quite upset about it. Conky knows it. It's it's in my it's in my clip somewhere, but it's when I had just killed a moose. I was in, I believe I was in Timberwolf Mountain. 
I believe that's yeah. I was in Timberwolf Mountain, and I was I just killed the moose right by the wing area, and I was cooking the moose, and the bear decides to take some of my lunch, and stood at the campfire like he normally does. So I fired the arrow, you know, I fired an arrow into him. He ran off. I had two fires going. I had one here and I had one here because I was cooking the moose. And I was cooking on two fires. And a wolf came down from a distance, was running like it was scared from something. And it went, it stopped at my fire and went around my fire like this and attacked me from behind and killed me. And I had just gotten a moose and I shot that bear. And I was like, come on. I was like day 170 or 160 or something. I was like, Conky was there. And I I know I had the clip somewhere, but in my, in my channel, but... Yeah, that was one of the. I don't know if it was a glitch or whatever, but he just. Really... Yeah, those ones I don't like. It's where you use your knowledge of like, okay, I know how the behavior is to work, and then those glitchy things where you end up dying or get, you know, where mm. you, you know you know that the wolf is scared of a fire, you know that the bear will stop by a fire if you don't attack it straight away mm -hmm. you know these are things that you kind of build into how you're playing the game and you know and you expect these things to work correctly yeah when those things then go no nope, uh <laughs> and then you get done in uh those things are just so frustrating especially yeah, dying by like, game glitch really sucks <laughs> it does but all right, Cap, we're going to address the two questions. I'll just repeat them real quick. Can you share the funny moments about the game with you or someone else? And in just can you remember your funniest and wackiest game glitch? Yeah, I'll go with the game glitch first since we were just talking about sure. it. I, I think everybody's had like a similar situation, but mine was just cooking a deer by the fire and the bear came towards me. So obviously I shot him. This was before I knew that bears were glitchy around fires and it just started circling me and faster and faster and faster and faster to where you like could barely see it and i'm just sitting in the middle of it like what what am i like what am i supposed to do here mm -hmm. like i can't shoot it because it's moving too fast and i'm scared to run past it because i'm afraid it's just going to attack me and it was going i mean it was going so fast it was unbelievable that and then the frust the the frustrating one was my a good outer loper run I had. And I tried to, for some reason, for the first time ever, go down into the bleak through the ravine and oh. I hit the death wall. E and I was just so frustrated. I, I knew that it, there was a possibility of it being there, but I didn't know the route. So mm. I just saw a big bank of snow and it looked like it would be easy to get down. And suddenly I'm dead. It's like, ah. Oh, no. um, but my funniest moment was actually with my brother when the game came out on Xbox, Alpha, Beta, whatever. I like basically got it, I think, like the day it released. Nobody knows anything about this game, and we're wandering around the map. My little brother was over at my house, and we're kind of taking turns. So we're taking turns playing, and as geeky as we both are, while one of us is playing, the other one was drawing a map on paper. So we could figure out because we kept getting lost and like dying. So we were like, we need a way to like figure out where we are. So we just started drawing a map by hand. I don't know if, if I still have the maps. I should look for them because it was obviously of just a mystery lake at the time. But that was it was funny. It's funny to me now that we did that. But at the same time, that was a very memorable time with you know my my brother that I that I cherish now too. So. It was fun all together. We're older now. We don't get to do those types of things. So that that was that was a little bonding like, moment man, for you guys. So nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But we're all so nerdy that we're like, we're gonna figure out because we didn't know how to. There was no map. Right. We're like, yeah. we gotta figure out what's going on mm. here. You can't just wander around aimlessly. That's a bad idea. But I haven't had too many crazy glitches. Just air glitches, really. Yeah, the bear glitches and like it. skating yeah, deer yeah, and. and skating wolves yeah. like they like you you scare them off and they they just skate along they don't like run they just kind of float along <laughs> tina bug yeah. you're on same questions uh, <clears throat> my funniest moments i don't i don't i don't know really um 
my two funny or i guess the funniest moments that i know are two glitches so as That's far fine. as i know that is That's memorable good. for me and my streams anyway um it's almost like every stream with av is a glitch or something like that so <laughs> great. it's fantastic mixed with his commentary it's a hell of a good time but anyway <clears throat> so i've had well dooming loper and hunting bears i've had a couple of really interesting bear glitches uh, that i just thought were really i just thought were really funny um the first one kind of frustrated me too but you know was at um where was it in mystery lake at the unnamed pond the bear there i'd never seen it glitch before but it glitched behind the tree and i'm sitting there behind a fire it's glitched there it looks like it's kind of going back and forth it's just being crazy um, and I remember sitting there thinking, what the heck am I going to do? Cause I can't get it to Diagro. I'm throwing fire at it, oh, you know, I remember I'm throwing that. torches I was at it. Right. And, and I'm just like, I can't get it to, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. If I run, oh. it's going to attack me. I just know this dang bear is going to attack me. <clears throat> and I think I literally said, I am going to die today. That's what's going to happen or die. <laughs> <laughs> and so I decided that I couldn't get him to Diagro. So I would just run and. I completely forgot the blind was there. Not that the blind, I don't know if it would have saved me or not, or if that bear would have just come into the blind or or what, but I ran right past the blind and uh, yeah, I got mauled. I died. Oh, man. <laughs> because I didn't remember have a that. Bandage and I was ripping up to make a bandage and I bled out. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. <laughs> um, and then, um, I'm sorry. What? Oh, I thought somebody was saying something. I oh, I was I was going to say something, but I didn't want to interrupt you. But I, I was going to say that I just thought, I just remembered of a kind of a funny moment I just had just the other night, as a matter of fact. Uh, I was I made it back to Kwanzaa in my Loper run. And I got, of course, I got the welcoming party was there in town, right? <clears throat> so I, I, you know, I'm just about made it into the garage and I, a wolf, you know, came out from around the corner and started aggroing on me. Well, what happened, you know where the blue truck is right in the back of Quonset? Well, on the left side of it, there's pallets there. So what happened was a wolf came and I panicked and I tried to run around and I got stuck at the pallets. I couldn't get by them and the wolf got me, right? So as I'm going back in, going back into the garage, there is a wolf on the other side of the garage. Agro, Agro is on me. I do the same mistake twice. I go back to the left side of the truck, got stuck with the pal, and got double wolfed within five seconds of each other. Yeah. That was a mean? funny moment for me. It wasn't funny. At the, well, it was funny because I laughed after I went in the garage. I said, I can't believe I made the same mistake twice in a row. Yeah. So that was kind of a little funny moment I had last night. Or it was actually it was two two nights ago or whatever. But okay. Thank you so much. Sweet, do you want to share a story? Do you have a new another one for us to share? I know you're Aurora Wolf, which is a really good story. Yeah, you want to that's share that pretty much um all I really have at this point right now mm. is uh I was in Coastal Highway and there were uh there was an Aurora out and, and uh I said, I'm definitely not going to go out here. Nope, not going to do it. And I did it anyway, because I was like, why not? It's Voyager. What, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, I just, I get attacked. I sleep it off, whatever. So I went out there and just about every wolf on that ice was just doing that, like, wolf bark glitch that they, they just stood there. Mm -hmm. And it was just funny as hell. And I just went and I killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun. You we went on doing a massacre. That, so. <laughs> a massacre. It really was. I have screenshots. I took screenshots by pretty much every wolf that I killed because it was just so funny to me. I, I'd never come across that kind of a glitch before. Awesome. So. Awesome. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean you're not ready for an interloper? You're out here killing Aurora wolves. Yeah, right. It was Voyager and they were glitched. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guarantee you, if I tried that crap on Interloper, I'd be dead. <laughs> Just so dead. If I, I was, even I was got very to proud that point. <laughs> yeah, I, I was so proud the first time I got an Aurora Wolf. <laughs> like, <I was> so <laughs> Not like there was anything that special, but I was so, so proud. So yeah. I, I have a little side question that was posed to me by a certain person today that I was supposed to address AV about 
And I think that <laughs> AV will probably figure out who it was. But the question was, was to ask AV his opinion on the Mystery Lake Dambulu and if you've ever found matches there. <laughs> uh, no, um, I mean, you don't get matches in the dam. Like, we've never found matches in the dam. The only thing that you can get in the dam is a cooking pot and a sewing kit. Uh, obviously, as much cloth as you can find. There's toilet water. You'll get between three and five food items if you loot everything. There's plenty of books. There's plenty of newspapers. Um, but no, we, we've got about 1,500 hours in the game. Uh, we have multiple runs extensively looted the dam and we have never once found matches so i don't know where these people did that question come. came from a good from our friend db i know yeah he's an oh, that what, uh, yeah, he gave it what's to the me story with that is there like a is that like an inside joke or something uh yeah i think it was one of his streams he was looking for matches in mystery lake and I was, was like, I'm going to go to the dam and get matches. And I'm like, you don't get matches in the dam. And then he obviously got a mod. He was playing a modded game, I imagine, and actually, actually spawned some in <laughs> to make it look like you actually get them there. Uh... So, I personally don't use mods and things like that. Mm. But you don't. Know, Ah, okay. So that's why. So he did, yeah. I was wondering why he put a couple laughing emotes after he said that. <laughs> so I got to make sure I asked him that. He'll probably see this vod anyway. Okay. I'm sure he's looking in there. He'll be in there somewhere. Great. Okay. Yeah. So moving right along. The next question is it's a pretty easy one. Um, if you can add any food item in the game, what would it be? AV. Uh,. This one I really struggled with. One, because we haven't played like the uh, slightly easier versions. So I honestly couldn't tell you off the top of my head half the loot that's actually in the game because I haven't seen it in over a year. Uh, I think birds would be a good addition to the game. You could use Oh, them that's like, a good one. Mm -hmm. Like a bird Maybe instead player. of having yeah. the birds flying around corpses, you would have maybe one or two that land by the corpses and you could like shoot them or stone them like you would a bunny. Or like uh, a wolf would like, get it, or you know, yeah, the wolf scare it off. It. Yep. You'd be able to get maybe furs from it in uh, feathers instead of you would get like uh, guts and um, instead of like a hide and guts, you could maybe get feathers from it and a little bit of food. You know, probably not as much as a bunny, but you know, a small amount. Uh, and maybe you could. They'd also implement like a, a bird trap in the game. You know, kind of like you have snares, <laughs> some sort of like something you could craft to leave out and try and catch birds i think that would be quite an interesting having another food source that's live uh if they didn't i mean i'd love them to expand on how many different types of fish you got um that would be interesting as well as like a different again like a, a something you could leave maybe like a, a trap line to do the fish but i mean that's technically that's a different question but yeah i think birds would be an interesting addition i struggled with this question he says and then look he nails it that's really cool answer. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. Just, I liked it. Um, I, I do want to just cut in for just a second. Go for it. Um, I did read an answer in the chat by uh, Joy. Um, alcohol. I think that would be pretty interesting. You know, you're kind of stumbling along. You know how you get that like five percent health, and and you're stumbling along. That would be kind of an interesting concept for sure. Like just if you wanted to goof around, you know. I, I mean, I've got enough on this side with the alcohol. I'm not sure I could deal with alcohol on <laughs> the hand in the game as well. <laughs> Ally said bread, so you can make different kinds of hamburgers. <laughs> I like that. Moose burgers, deer burgers, right? Wolf burgers, <laughs> rabbit burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Cap, question to you, my good friend. How, same to you. What, what kind of food would you like to see in the game? So this might not be like an additional food, but the way I wish it worked was you lost calories. If you have a piece of meat laying out and it drops to like 56%, it drops the calories as well. Mm. So like you can't just like stockpile meat forever. Like maybe when it gets to 0%, uh, a moose steak is still 100 calories or 200 calories. Like wow. It's still got some, but like it drops it because then it takes... You, you always have to be hunting then. Um, I know that's not maybe the exact question, but... No, that, but that would certainly add difficulty to the game. That's oh for damn gosh, sure. Yeah, my gosh. Because all those uh, interloper strats with, you know, 
get into cooking five mm. you know save the meat eat it when it's ruined well mm. that would totally blow that out of yeah, the water that sure would. you wouldn't get a lot of calories I, from it yeah <laughs> get so you could still eat it but you always have to be it would make you move a lot more mm. in my opinion and that's part partly my problem is i like to stay in one spot and i have to force myself to move around the map and that would make you move around because you Absolutely. run out of animals on a certain mm. to mm -hmm. survive on so yeah right Good answer. Tina Bug? Um, you know, I've always wondered why there's not any salt. Any salt ah. or any kind of seasonings, you know, seasonings. or anything of that nature. I mean, salt Love it. is how you preserve meat. I, I mean, sure. I know it's outside, um, but another food source is good too. Um, <clears throat> but I wouldn't want it necessarily to be a predator. I know Tasmanian devils and stuff like that have been talked about, but. I did good with wolves and bears. I mean, I kind of do good. <laughs> mm. um, and on a comfort level, I don't understand why those people don't drink hot cocoa. I just don't get it. That's true. Good point. Good point. Well, this can kind of tie into the next question, too, which was talking mm -hmm. about new mechanics. But, Sweet, I'd like to – actually, you can chime in with this – with the combo question, it's Sweet, if you want to. Uh, I was going to say, what kind of new mechanics? Now, you guys just now mentioned food mechanics. So – we're we're gonna extend this question to the food and and mechanics. What kind of new mechanics would you like to see in the game? And sweet, I'd like you to add to that too, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um. Well, when I kind of thought of the question originally, um, I did provide examples just so you know we were super clear on it. Um, other than w new ways to make food and and different recipes and whatnot, um, I thought it'd be kind of interesting. Uh, some kind of uh, fuel siphoning mechanic from cars uh, might be easier than, you know, catching and cooking the fish and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how they would do it. I didn't really think super far into it, but I think that'd be another cool way to get fuel. Especially in some of the gut. harder levels. Huh? Suck it through a gut. Ugh, gross. <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, I thought um, that was a good one. Uh, anybody else would like to add to it to this that question feel free to chime in I... uh, sure um like a, expanding the cooking i think uh maybe if you could combine food items you know maybe make like broths or soups you know have some rabbit but maybe you've got some mushrooms in there or something like that yeah. gives you maybe like a slightly more you know like a combination thing that maybe it keeps you warmer longer than maybe a tea does that would work or gives you a bit Fills more you up more than a tea would yeah. more calories yeah. yeah like maybe some sort of small multiplier on how much goes in there uh mechanics wise like a couple of things maybe with the fire i like the idea of like an ember carrier so like when the wind comes and takes out your you know you got nine minutes left if you could like i don't know use like a tin can and maybe you have to use saplings because saplings are worth something you know mm -hmm. you can craft like a carrier you know kind of scoop the embers into your can and you've got whatever that countdown was left to try and reposition yourself uh get somewhere um you know and try and make another fire you you have probably like a a, a lower diff you know like a, a lower percentage to do a fire maybe it's like 50 percent, but you know yeah. it gives you like an additional chance to kind of reposition uh the other thing i thought of is maybe it's like a windbreak you could maybe you could craft around a fire like uh i guess like a corner thing so you can like craft mm. out a stick that, that kind of covers two sides of a fire that you know if, you, yeah. if you're a goose kill or a bear kill somewhere you're gonna be for a while if you can just kind of give like 50 percent wind cover on some side it would take you some time obviously some sticks you'd have to do it in the moment uh i think something like that would be quite cool I agree. Like a Absolutely. like a canopy, fire canopy, or like a kind of a. I know exactly. Yeah. Like in real life, it's probably what we would do anyway. I mean, we've got to block mm -hmm. the fire. Yeah. That's probably the first thing I would think of. Right. Let's get some yeah, to. I like both of those answers. Mm, me too. Me too as well. I, I like the I like the idea of the all all your ideas actually, and I was even thinking of like Carl's idea about the ember can. I think that's brilliant. We have to have another use for the recycle cans, in my opinion, because there isn't any use for them really, except making noisemakers. <clears throat> I would like to see yeah. you be able to recycle them down for scrap metal and stuff. That I mean, you should be able to do that. Otherwise, me, I littered the. Great bear with them. That's what I do with them. 
and it would be nice to have something like that or you know i was also thinking on along the fire lines i like the bow drill idea being able to craft a bow drill or a drying mechanism to dry the food that would be an awesome somebody had mentioned that in my stream the other day as a mm -hmm. matter of fact they mentioned a drying rack to put your meat on to dry it, it would last a lot longer and stuff you know, of and course, you'd, go right along with that, you'd have to craft it all, of course, it, but that's fine. You know, I don't mind. If it's dry, it, it keeps all its calories. Sure. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I also think that Feld, Feld Alloy had a really good idea and is something that I often wish that we'd had is the ability to build like a sled or something to move things. Mm. Also, we should be able to move oh, carcasses. Yeah. I would love to move carcasses. I hate that you have to sit there and harvest them there will accept the money but if you're able to craft something where you could move them or drag them to a wind blocked area or someplace different that would be a game changer especially in Nagoa you know there's um, yeah. there is <laughs> a I've... sorry go ahead no no it no is... you go finish all right no I'm I'm done <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I was. Just, it just made me think about it when you said it. But there is a game mode, a game mode mod that mm -hmm. that has that in it, where you can pick up the carcass and move it to a different area. That's why I was just gonna. Just I would say that it. I think it would need the limit of not having, like you couldn't move a bear and a moose. Like right. Like, well, no, 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 but you can obviously move. Those are giant. A, a, a deer, a, deer, a, deer. a wolf. Yeah, like I could drag. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. You could drag a deer or a wolf. Was, and... was I in your stream when we were talking about that, Tina? Was that? Do you remember that? I, I can't remember. I do. I, I I do. Your, yeah, where I'm just like, just take them by the antlers and just drag them right. to the cave. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because you know, because you've got you're sitting in a cave, you're wind blocked. It's like two feet in front of you. You can't yeah. harvest it because it's in the middle of a blizzard if you could just grab it and drag it back a few feet you could harvest it you know? i mean if you can yeah. if you can and and i've done this if you can carry literally a hundred pounds of freaking gear right? you can drag a deer into the cave yeah. exactly. <laughs> especially if you're hungry <laughs> that's true exactly very very true <laughs> so that's something i've always wished that they had and always have wondered i love that you can Thankfully, you can carry a bunny around, but you should be able to move a deer. I just don't understand Absolutely. why we can't. Yeah, and a wolf too. Yeah. And a wolf, yeah. And, and a wolf, yeah. Yep. Very cool. My yeah. only mechanic is the, the torch. Like, <laughs> my lowest torch on the wheel to start with. Yes. Um, And then the, my other one would be uh crafting. And it would kind of go along with like what AV said, like if you could introduce birds, I, I, I want a way to to craft underwear. Or some mm -hmm. additional item. Like eventually, you just run out where you're like, "Oh, I yeah. could make twenty pairs of deer pants." Like, I think a bit more versatility on the crafting. Like the, the for me, like the thing that uh, things like wolf pelts. You've only got one job for it is a is a wolf jacket, and then once you've got exactly. it, you don't need another one. You never need to. You're never going to skin another wolf again because you're either gonna the jacket's gonna last forever, or you're gonna replace it with a moose cloak or 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 a bear thing, and you know. Uh, you're never going to use it, and it just seems such a waste that there's only like one specific item. Like if you mm -hmm. could do multiple items from different quality gear or different hides that would have different stats, I think that would be quite interesting. That's a uh, great point. That's what happened to me the other night in my stream. I have I have like seven or eight wolf pelts scattered all over the place, and I was just saying that I said I'm rocking double bear. Why would I? make a wolf coat i got right. two bear coats right. why you know so it's like so i'm sitting here looking at these cured wolf pelts going like what the hell do i do with them you know there's just so they're just sitting there yeah it's a great point i like that very, very minor uses for them and i feel like they're only in special game modes like uh dead man mm -hmm. stuff like that where yeah that's different yeah Even putting them on a shelter you know you, using the wolf pelts to make maybe something a warmer more insulated um snow shell wind block or like a wind block, yeah. What about your wind block? Yeah, yeah. yeah that way you could use it for the wind block. There you go. That's it. Yeah, off the other wolves, right? They see their mates like side by side like this, looking at each other. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right, sweet. You can, if you want to move on to the next set of questions, if you like. Absolutely. Um, okay, so AV, uh, what is your favorite location? Uh, on Great Bear Island, and what is where is your favorite 
location to put a base? Uh, okay, so favorite location. Yeah, like scenic wise. I love Desolation Point. I love being up in the lighthouse, the view from Desolation Point, especially you get the aurora as well. Um, it's a shame to me that Desolation Point is one of those areas where it's kind of a bit like Bleak Inlet in that there's very little, because it's so small, there's not a lot of long term survivability there. Like if I could um, stay there you know, make it like a long-term base, but there's just not a lot of resources around. There's not a lot of animal spawns. It's a shame it's not somewhere that you can stay more long-term. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, DP is definitely my favorite, you know, scenic to look out. Uh, Base-wise, I would say Coastal Highway is my favorite region. I like to base at the garage. Uh, I'm a little bit particular about how I order stuff and store stuff. I like the garage for the space because I like to have all my different pelts laid out so I can see them. So it's got great space for that. I like having the three lockers near the fire so I can, you know, have food in one, a random items in the other, like clothes in another, just to kind of sort things out. Mm. Uh, and Coastal Highway to me is like long term survivability. You could, once you're set up, it's got fishing, beach combing, you've got coal nearby. It's kind of that that capture all region that just has everything. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, that would be my favorite region. Awesome. So just just to be clear, so your favorite place to base is not Forlor Muskeg? Because <laughs> you spent a lot of time there. <laughs> we spent a few days in it. Yeah. Snow shells throughout the cave. I do like spinnies. Kind of. No, I don't. Yeah. Kind uh, of. FM, I have issues with that place. But yeah, no. It's shock high. It's not FM. It's not a snow shelter outside Marsh Ridge Cave. You don't like babysitting that snow shelter? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like passing time. That's the one thing stick I don't a like. Day, stick a day, right? Stick a day. <laughs> that, I mean, you would remember anyway from when we were doing that challenge. But I, I, I like to be productive all the time. Like, yeah, he, I, he never, can, he never complains about passing. Time. He never complains no, once about passing time in that cave at all. Never. Yeah. <laughs> you angels. That's why I brought it up. I just wanted to tease you about it because yeah, yeah, you were you're such right. a big fan. <laughs> you're it was an impressive run, though. Very impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's probably our greatest achievement, but I know that's a question later on, so we'll we'll save that. Absolutely. For yep. All right, Cap, you are up. Where is your fav two favorite places? Oh, he's muted. Oh, muted. Sorry. Sorry, yep. my dog. I didn't know if that was me lagging so, or if it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally me. So uh, they're both at the same place, and that's Timberwolf. I like. Oh, that's a good one. The uh, I like the hut, and then my favorite like scenic spot is the plank ash because you can yes. see the whole, the whole map. And be up there like during an aurora or like one of the pink sunsets. That's it's amazing. There's not quite enough food to stay there for. You know, you kind of do have to venture out a little bit, but yeah, you could you could quite a while. Well, if you're lucky enough to why. get the moose spawn, then you've got you've got quite a yeah, bit yeah. of food right in your backyard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yep, I totally agree with that. That's my that's my same answer. <laughs> I love uh, I Is love it? that yeah. region. Yeah, and then you've got you know as much as people knock Pleasant Valley, I actually really like it because there's a lot going on there um as much as the weather sucks but you've got the plane crash so you've got a ton of clothing right there and you've got you know you've got the the farmhouse and everything so it's it's like right next door and i just love it it's easy to get to so yeah that's my go-to run is to hit the plane crash summit get the backpack yep crash. absolutely all right tina what about you well, favorite, favorite place to base is Quonset because it's so centrally located and I can run back and forth between DP, the ravine, you know? Right. Um, and so that is a great place to base. Um, plus, there's plenty of food and everything around there. So coming back there, I don't worry about running out of food. There's plenty of opportunities for kiting deer and stuff like that and plenty of areas with bunnies. So I really like that. Now, my favorite scenic place which is not a good place for the base, is Foreman's. 
in Ash Canyon. Um, not great for long-term survivability, but beautiful, beautiful place. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I agree. So. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my next question I wanted to ask um, is, uh, let's see. What is your favorite and least favorite sound effect, AV? Like what, what do you, what, you know, what do you like to come across? And then what is just, what makes you cringe? Is, you know what my favorite sound effect is? It's the bunny snap. It's just <laughs> snap on the neck. <laughs> it's satisfying. Of course. He's it's looking up at you. That, if you want it bang on, I love, I love the snap. I'm a bit of a sadist. So I know there are people that are going to be upset with me. But... <laughs> Yeah, I love the snap. It's very satisfying. I mean, the game has got so many incredible sounds. Uh, I mean, I think I really struggled to think of something that I didn't like. And it's like a cop out, but the ones that I don't like, I guess the heartbeat, um, just because it gets annoying. Like, you know, if you're if you're stuck on that condition and you're maintaining under 10, yeah. like yeah. I'm playing like uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours of that constant dush. Um, yeah, it's very unsettling it, too. I, I, it'd be nice if it, it was kind of like a bit like intermittent, or it would, you know, it would kind of sound when you, when you were dropping, but then it kind of stopped. Um, and I guess to a degree, the flare is a bit annoying. It's a bit loud, but I don't generally use a lot of flares. But yeah, like I struggled. I I can't even. I know. I remember at the time uh, when they changed the crow sounds in the game, there was an uproar and everybody hated the crow sounds. But I tell you the truth i can't remember what the old crows sound like anymore so <laughs> you know the crows don't bother me um but yeah like the rest of the sounds are also spot on they, they really nailed it with uh with getting them as realistic as possible um so yeah um yeah i'm just gonna cop out and go heartbeat for the worst one okay and i just also want to say before we move on is uh obviously Will's breathing and grunting is, <laughs> I think we all could agree it bothers us. So other than that sound, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so what about you, Cap? What's your answer? Oh, my favorite would be really just like one-shotting any animal and hearing that, oh, and they drop like right there in front of you, especially a moose. Yeah. Uh, my least favorite is definitely the wind. I just hate listening to that wind whistle and sometimes I'll have my volume so I won't realize I have my volume so loud because I'm listening for wolves or bears mm -hmm. and it's just it can be non-stop it's, like, oh, it's kind of like the flare like, just stop like I don't care about right. walking into the wind. I just don't want to hear it anymore yeah absolutely what about you Tina my favorite sound is the whoosh of the torch lighting. I love that sound for mm. some reason. <laughs> it gives me joy every time I hear it. I just love it. Um, my least favorite sound is definitely, but you said I can't use it, Will's grunting. <laughs> I cannot stand that in any way, shape, or form. I will not play Will because I don't like it. Um, just shouldn't happen. <laughs> um, but it would definitely be the next snap of the bunny. I cannot stand that sound. It grates my nerves, especially since they have that little animation with the little <laughs> yeah. nose move on the bunny. Aww. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that, A.V., like that. Mm, no, nice. I, I'm not a fan of the bunny neck snapping. I, it's my least favorite part, aside from Will. Yeah, nice. yeah I, don't, I don't really enjoy the bunny stuff either i mean it doesn't really bother me as much as it does you but i definitely it's not my favorite thing and it's not something i always look forward to i kind of i kind of do that little head turn too sometimes you yeah. know so like close your ears turn your eyes just get it over with <laughs> you know when i first started doing it it was hard i didn't want to and i tried not to kill bunnies and then i realized oh my gosh omg <laughs> i am playing on loper i have yep, to kill some bunnies to. you know yep. And I had to get over that, and I did with the help of somebody actually. But anyhow, I got over it. And... Yeah, I mean, you you don't have to like it; you just have to do it, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm curious about your answer, David. Uh, what is your favorite and least favorite? Um, 
Well, I actually have two favorites. Well, one that well, I love the sound of the bow. I love the plink sound of the Ooh, of the yeah. release of the bow, and I love the sound of the sticks when you pick them up. That plink plink, and each stick sounds a little yeah. bit different than the other. <laughs> My my least favorite sound is I I don't I can't stand the sound of the gun cleaning kit. That just drives me crazy. That, oh, that yeah, scratching that kind of sound. grindy noise, like whistly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> it's been so long that. since I've heard that sound. I didn't mm. think what it even sounds like. <laughs> no, I, me either. But well, I sometimes is a challenge I do. But sometimes when I watch other streamers and they're cleaning their their rifle, yeah. or I'm like, oh, I, you recently I did, did like, like a like, gun loper oh. thing too, didn't you? Like a you got you had that one challenge recently. I did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I had to clean the gun. I'm like, oh, God, I hate that. It's like chalks <laughs> on a blackboard. But, yeah, my favorite sounds is definitely, I love that plink sound the bow makes. I just love that. That boink, boink sound. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Sweet? What's your favorite and least favorite? Um, On both sides of that, I really can't decide. So I'm going to have two answers for each one. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for my favorites, um, I love the crackling of the fire. Mm. Um, and then when you, when you put a piece of meat on the, on the stone, how it kind of fizzles and, and yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. So it's like, I know I'm going to be eating soon. I love mm. that sound. <laughs> Steaks on the barbie. Um, yep. And then, uh, this one's probably going to make people laugh, but. Uh, I actually really love the sound of Will throwing a torch. I don't know why, but it's just, it's so obnoxious that it just makes me laugh every time. <laughs> it's, it sounds like he's literally throwing like, I don't know, like a chair or a couch or something happy. It just, it just makes me laugh, but. Um, and then my two least favorite sounds is, uh, I don't really like the cutting up of the deer. Oh. I, I think it's too, I don't know. It just, ugh, it just makes me cringe. I don't like it. Yep, exactly. Uh, all right. <laughs> I, I, I legit, when people cut up the deer, and this is a common uh, occurrence, unfortunately, but I have, I literally have to either mute the stream or just like turn it down so it's not so loud. I just, I can't stand it. <laughs> but, um, and then another one is, um, and you guys have heard me talk about this, but whenever Will gets attacked by a wolf, I just, those screams just, oh, they're just, they give me chills. It, it's just that the voice acting on that end is just, it's too realistic. <laughs> you know so it's almost like they're getting mauled for real life <laughs> real yeah, life or something it's, it's they are pretty realistic like, even astrid if... that with a bear it's like the chills yeah. that she does she makes them like, and i don't oh, know God. if it's because so many people play her and i'm just used to hearing mm. her get attacked but or maybe it's just like the the noise just doesn't have as much of an effect as wills but mm. wills definitely bothers me for sure yeah so He's definitely going through some agony there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, David, okay. you are up. All right, we're almost finished here. We got two, three more rounds of questions. Um, have you ever played, uh, this one goes out to AV. Have you ever played a custom game or challenge? And what was it, if yes? Uh, well, we predominantly do challenges and custom games. Mm. Can you get, get give me one of your uh, list two of your favorite challenges that you, that you like to do that you have done? Two of my favorite that I've mm. done, I guess, not to leech into one of the next questions, um, Reborn Traveler and Self Reliance. Mm. I think those uh, are both the, tough, tough challenges. Uh, the tournaments as well. Apart from one of them, the tournament's are always good fun. As you know, I'll do read one. Yeah, self reliance. I enjoyed, uh, and I've done a couple of um, spawn and stay in uh, in one region. Uh, the few of those that I've done have been uh, have been fun. Uh, the good thing, I, I I generally take something away from each of the different challenges that I've done. Like you kind of are forced, depending on it, or for me, I'm kind of forced to to overcome a certain something uh self-reliance was one of those things that taught us you know hey how this is how we kite things um 
you know you learn how to control your calories and things like that through different keeping warm through different different challenges i mean we've done like dozens and dozens of little weird ones that we've done ourselves which are you know like only drinking liquids no solids you know we've done meat and fish only runs we've done no stick runs we've done you know no no saws and hammers you know so little little tweaks like that to an interloper run but yeah i predominantly probably ever since your first tournament that i did um i haven't done like a, a vanilla loper run i have like a hundred day file somewhere but pretty much the last year has been doing um challenges um in some way shape or form and don't ask him about fisher loper Oh, fish life was boring. <laughs> I mean, was it? Was it boring? You know it was boring. I'm I only... know it was boring. <laughs> he didn't complain once. Yeah, it's just IFM. Mm -hmm. Anybody hear me? No. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cap, it's um, your turn. Yeah, uh, have you ever played a custom gamer challenge, which I know you have, but you can share it? And what was it? It was your challenge, I believe. Mine? It was not the Dead Man. Yeah. Dead World, or was Maybe it? It wasn't. Dead World. It was Dead World. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's been a while. I really enjoyed it. I, I Honestly, I hated it at first because there was no animals. Yeah. I just like, probably a little bit like AV, I just like to shoot stuff. But by day 50, it gets very challenging. Yes. Like it mm -hmm. was, it, helped to level up my game mm. quite a bit like especially early game i was able to now i'm able to survive I've easier I, I feel um early game because i know where all those resources are yeah it forces you to know yeah. where all the carcasses are right yeah, yeah you got to know where yeah. all the carcasses yeah. are <clears throat> nice nice um to be honest though my normal game style i'm not a huge challenge player mm -hmm. i, I kind of like to take it easy i am competitive but i don't like to be competitive in this game it's one of the it's almost like my outlet from competitive being competitive. Mm. I grew up doing sports and stuff, so I'm competitive and everything, but I like this game because it's just me by myself and I don't have to be competitive. Great. Great. Nice. Tina? Absolutely. Hey, also welcome Raiders. Mm. <laughs> hey Fox. Hey Don. Welcome in everybody. Yes, welcome Raiders. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Tina. Okay. So we are um we're answering the question here, and the question is have I ever played a custom game or challenge and what was it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, I've played custom games, um, a couple of the tournaments. Um, I did the spawn and stay in FM, didn't get anywhere close to AV, um, and in Ash Canyon. Um, did really, did actually better in Ash Canyon than I did in FM. I learned a lot from both of those challenges and I really actually liked both those challenges and I'm still alive in my FM challenge. I just have to go in and finish it. Nice. <laughs> um, but I grew in leaps and bounds as a loper player by doing those spawn ins challenges and staying and they helped actually Ash Canyon helped prepare me quite a bit for the neighborly native tournament that mm. Conky did, yeah. uh, which was a lot of fun. And so that really helped prepare me and move me forward from that. I like doing the challenges and I want to do more custom modes. Um, I just, right now I'm grinding to get my feet. So I've been doing everything on Vanilla Loper. Mm -hmm. so. I very much enjoyed Conky's challenge too. It was, it was really, it, it really yeah. forces, forced you to really think out of the box and actually do some things that you don't normally do in the game, you know, it was really good. Right. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I still have that run alive too at 36 days. And I don't know if I'm going to continue it or just keep it. I haven't quite decided. Mm. Um, but <clears throat> I don't think I would have been able to do that challenge had I not learned from the previous challenges, how to do other things such as the kiting and stuff, since you don't have to forge, well, you have to forge for the knife, but you know, you didn't really have to forge for any other kind of weapons. So right now I'm trying to learn how to use a bow because I still haven't really used a bow in Loper. Well, okay, I have now, but until the most recent challenge that I'm doing, I'd never used a bow in Loper before. So um, I'm getting used to using a bow. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. Uh, sweet. I don't 
you've not played any custom challenges, right? I, I, don't I know. haven't, but right. I will share that um, one of my favorite ones to watch. Um, I really like Dead World. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's very calming and relaxing. There's no constant. You're not looking around for the predators. You're just more focusing on, okay, where do I get my next, uh, where do I get my next food? Mm -hmm. um, you know, keeping an eye on the weather. Where's my next shelter going to be? Stuff like that. Just keep moving. Um, and I like that aspect for sure. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll probably try that at some point. Um, I think that would be kind of fun for me. Mm -hmm. Great. Nice. Okay. Um, AB, um, can you share, share some of your biggest achievements and some of your biggest failures? Sure. Uh, biggest achievement, I guess, would probably be a uh, keg stand challenge mm -hmm. that was floating around uh, a few months ago, maybe six months ago. So the keg stand challenge, if you don't know, keg stand is you spawn in the fall of Muskeg. You are not allowed to leave the region. Uh, the idea is to survive 50 days. Um, it was uh, a challenge that got picked up by the uh, Long Dark uh, gaming community on Facebook and had quite a lot of traction with people, a couple of people streaming it, a couple of a lot of people offline playing it. Um, yeah, we kind of smashed that one. We did. We ended up doing 251 days we stayed in FM alone. Um, and as Tina and Sweet alluded to earlier, it was predominantly in the late game, sitting in a cave and then sitting in a snow shelter. Um, but yeah, that was off two packs of matches. Like we used like a pack of matches in our first insane 50 days. <laughs> and we got down to doing Crazy. using two matches in like the last hundred days. Like it was not super exciting, but it was there was a kind of a constant challenge of like uh there's there was enough going on that i needed to monitor that kind of kept it engaging and like working out how much food i needed like trying to stockpile food with like how to hunt without using fire um and risk going out because you would be surprised how quickly clothes deteriorate in the game on local level if you don't repair anything like if you've been to fm before you can find maybe three pieces of clothing and that's it um, so you, I think our last item of clothing died on day like 130, which was a ski jacket that you, I repaired twice. And there's no cloth oh in gosh. it. As well. So, yeah, that's probably my biggest achievement was cake stand. Uh, the other one, I guess, which I was really happy to complete was Reborn Traveler. And it's Kimi Ota challenge where basically you start off naked on Interloper. You can only wear crafted gear and you have to... You have to do a complete set of uh, crafted gear for each region that has at least two bear spawns and a workbench. So that was FM, <laughs> ML, Timberwolf, uh, PV, and Coastal Highway. Um, and you could go to other regions, but if you did, you had to do so naked. Uh, and I managed to do it on about 140 days. That's probably like the other big achievement. I was that one took a lot of slogging to do. We had one that run that died on like day 90 with like three quarters of the way through. And that again is what I that, that challenge for me was like you are constantly on your toes because as soon as you go somewhere new, you can get complacent in what you're wearing and like how warm you are. You know, if you think you've got a full set of deer, rabbit, uh, bear, wolf, you know, you're nice and warm. Suddenly you go into a new region and you have literally no clothes. Uh, you've got to mm -hmm. stay on your A game on your on keeping on the frostbite and that otherwise you could just totally get yourself wiped out but those would be my two probably my two biggest achievements um the one that was my biggest failure i think it would have to be maria's tournament if anyone remembers the uh fury then silence tournament it was a uh, kind of like a birchman based um birchman is like no condition recovery with the exception of birch bark teas and stims it was also a hunting challenge uh where it was uh you got points based on accuracy and killing certain animals uh, i could not get a foothold in that at all uh i was really frustrated because i had like a, a 60 day um kind of dead man run which was literally i had a run still going where you could only recover from stims 
and I could not for the life of me work out why I couldn't get through and get anywhere. So that was a month long tournament. Uh, some of you will have remembered I was like bashing my head against the wall and it really did frustrate me. So that that is definitely like one of my worst moments is the fact that I couldn't even get a foot in, let alone finish a tournament. It really did frustrate me. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, AV. That was, that was great. It was awesome. Cap? Um, uh, I'd say my, my uh, best achievement would honestly probably just be surviving an interloper. Because <laughs> I, like, I played Voyager and I just jumped on it. It took me, I'd say, somewhere between five and ten runs to get one that, that stuck. Mm -hmm felt so good like just finally being it because you could watch other people do it but when you're struggling to do it it, it can be frustrating but that just because i haven't done many challenges that'd probably be my biggest achievement uh my biggest disappointment would probably be any type of nagoa run runs at all i did do part of a tournament uh, before I stopped streaming early on in the year, or maybe late last year. And I just, I couldn't, kind of like AV said, I, I just couldn't get going. I mean, and it was, it was so frustrating to, mm. that jump from Interloper to Nagoa is, in my opinion, a similar jump from, from like Voyager to Interloper. Like it's that, it's that drastic. And you can't, you just, there's nothing to survive on. <laughs> it's so mm -hmm. frustrating. So I, I felt like I needed after that, I, I needed to get my skills a little better, a little higher before I went back in that. Nice. Very yeah, nice. Yeah. Thanks, Cap. Tina? Surviving on Interloper. I mean, <laughs> we're not all AV. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, the AC challenge was a big win for me. I got frustrated with myself in the um, neighborly native, but it was actually quite an achievement of jumping my skills and then getting that new personal best. Um, as frustrating as some things could be, because like Cap says, you know, I know the game. I know a lot of the things. I know what to do. And sometimes it's hard to... I just get distracted, <laughs> you know, and implementing it and getting to where I am doing it on a more of a habit basis, as opposed to having to think about every movement that I'm making. Um, that is something that I'm still working on. And I still kind of feel like I, tr I struggle with. And sometimes I have to remind myself that not everybody plays an interloper and mm -hmm. But it just playing on interloper is an achievement. It and is. It, so that can be difficult sometimes, especially when I'm surrounded by amazing people um, in the community that can do some amazing things on interloper and custom interloper and Nagoa. And it just sometimes hits me. My greatest failure is Maria's tournament as well. And I was playing Maria's tournament on Stalker. And we fell off that damn bridge. <laughs> mm, I know. Oh no! <laughs> Is that where that came from? <laughs> I finally, finally got a run off and running, and I fell off the truss. Oh, oh no! Mm. Anyway, that was Stalker. That is behind me, and I have mastered the bridge. So nice. We can cross it. <laughs> yes. Nice. That's great. That's you know, awesome. I think we've all done. So don't feel bad. I know, but I was. You well, that was your first like, time, wasn't it? You died in a previous tournament on that same bridge and lost okay, your life. Yes, that's oh, no. fair. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It was, no, it was, the next was, was that my tournament you fell into? It was to? the next tournament. It was in. It was. In, it was in all your bases. Yeah. On <laughs> I fell off the bridge again. So. We have mastered the bridge. We can cross the bridge now. That's good, Tina. So in my next tournament, you're good to go across the bridge, right? I'm going to make sure that includes going across the ravine trestle in thanks, the challenge, thanks, right? Thank you. 
<laughs> all your bridges belong to us, right? There we yeah, go. Yeah, all your bridges belong to us. That's it. That's it. I love it. How many times are you going to make me go over the bridge? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> A V crossed that damn bridge with a heartbeat the other no, we night. At the end, and that's the second time. It yeah, was the we... second time. You fell off the second time. You didn't even make it to the broken part, but you had a heartbeat and you crossed it. I know you were using a can, but still, mm. you made it. And I'm just like, mm-hmm, yep, yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. That would you be like kind to? Of a funny. That'd be kind of a funny challenge, like a, just a short-term challenge. Uh, would be to get yourself you. down to like five percent health where you're wobbling mm -hmm. and try to get over that bridge without using any of the tricks just that's just how skill. av fell off though. he couldn't I, even get to the point i when thought he was about wobbling. sweet that's a that's a great point sweet i actually thought about something like that one time i thought about having a race oh, who can be who can hell, run across it? the trestle and actually make it there yeah. i thought about yeah. doing that that would be so fun mm -hmm. for sure sometimes Cy runs across the trestle bit. yeah I, I don't he was doing that the other day and i had to look away i was like uh -uh. i mean i i go as far as <laughs> i go as far as auto walking it i won't run i'll auto walk it across though oh god <laughs> yeah. but anything else is madness if you can run over that break then kudos mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. well yeah, he's on exactly. controller so i don't know if i makes it yeah, easier it, i think it does i, I just yeah. thought it was crazy i was like i can't watch this <laughs> all right you're like no <laughs> great okay. yeah okay so let's move it right along again uh sweet you want to take the last uh section of questions Absolutely. for you there sure um uh, okay so a v um if you could take anyone with you on a long dark adventure who would it be uh, it could be anyone uh, in real life or someone on Twitch, uh, a favorite character from a book or a film. Who would it be and why? Um, so obviously I would have to say Tina, Tina, but that's not my real answer. Um, so I go for Ed Stafford. Uh, he is a an English explorer survivalist, if you don't know who he is. He's done a lot of, he was, he holds the record for walking the Amazon, Ooh. Uh, the Amazon River, uh, the only person to do it. He's done a lot of survival stuff. I really like his, um, like his program, his survival programs. He'll do like get dropped off on an island for like 60 days with no tools and no clothes. Mm. You know, he's got those sort of series. Um, and, I like survival documentaries and programs a lot. It's kind of like why I like survival games. Uh, I think it'd be really interesting to take him uh, almost to be like, kind of like, okay, this is, you know, how would you adapt and how would you do this on a, on how would you deal with this situation? And, you know, I guess if it was a real life thing, you know, knowing the mechanics and stuff and, and what resources are available to you, uh, I think it'd be interesting to see kind of like how, he would go about doing things and he must have some absolutely amazing stories like you imagine the sort of campfire stories you have as someone that's walked across literally followed the whole of the amazon and has done survival situations for like months and months all over the world like you'd never get bored i think yeah that'd be pretty interesting uh-oh okay. i'm bringing tina so the bears here first <laughs> Oh my god. All right. What about you, Cab? <laughs> uh, so I'd actually probably say my dad. Okay. Um maybe nice. Maybe ten or fifteen years ago. Because he's he's not, you know, master survivor, but he he knows quite a bit. We grew up in the mountains. Um I think also I just enjoy spending time with my dad. He's an awesome guy, so that'd be that'd be good. He could take care of me and I can I could bug him like when I was a little kid. <laughs> are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> no, it's just, but, but see honestly, that mountain like... over there, son? It's over there. No, we're not there yet. Okay, we're not there yet. <laughs> you have eyes? Can you see what we're saying? Um, I, I, I would somewhat bring Summer Gemini because she goes with me on all my TLD journeys already. So Aww. the summer Aww. music. So. Summer love. Nice summer love. Yeah. My my dad would be my dad would have to be my pick. He's very very intelligent. Very intelligent man and he grew up like I said, up in the mountains, hunting all the time, fishing. He can do 
all kinds of things that I know I couldn't do. So plus it'd be an awesome trip. I I can't imagine also the level of trust you guys would have, you know, because that would be a factor as well. You have to be able to trust the person that you're surviving with for sure. So yeah, he's probably the most trustful person in my life. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Very good answer. (laughs) All right. What about you, Tina? Who would you bring? So you didn't specify what kind of TLD adventure. There's like two different answers for that because okay. if you're just going for the snow and the aurora and the outdoors, well, obviously a good baby. But <laughs> if you're talking about what happened in TLD, yeah, absolutely, Bear Gillis, British, funny. What else do you want? That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, really. Yeah, I mean, I, that is an open-ended question. It could be whatever kind of <laughs> TLD adventure you yep. want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, I I really enjoy Bear Gillis. Um, I like his man versus wild. Um, I do like the running wild with Bear Gillis. It is funny. Um, he does a lot of great things. He is a fantastic survivalist. He is British, so that's a bonus, right? But no, that's I I do love watching some of his documentaries. Um, and he's got a book that he's put out. Um, and so I do think that he would be. A lot of fun. All right. All right. Cool. All right, David, who are you bringing? Yeah, Mel, he is. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I have to compete with Cap because I would take Summer too. But yeah, I mean, yes. I, to, <laughs> to, to take somebody, you know, that that would help me in a TLD. Yeah, it would, I would probably say Les Stroud. I'm more of a Les Stroud person, Survivor okay. Mad. Uh, man, God, I like Bear Grylls too. Don't get me wrong, Bear, they're both amazing, but I kind of like Les Stroud a little bit. I think Bear Grylls is a little bit fanatic, <laughs> but <laughs> I also, I also would want to take somebody. See, if I took Summer with me, she'd want to off me after the first day. So I probably would not want to take Summer with me. I would have to sleep with one eye open with her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, these bringing Astrid. Yeah, there you mm. go. <laughs> Summer, I love you. <laughs> LD's bringing Astrid. <laughs> well, don't get into like the fires. He'll be there all day. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I, I would have to great. say it would have to be somebody with that has survival knowledge. I mean, that would be the wise mm-hmm. choice, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, mm-hmm. if you think about it, like just like Avi said and Cap said, you know, his dad knows a little bit about survival as well. And there's that trust that Tina mentioned. You got to have that trust. Mm-hmm. And Sweet mentioned it too. You got to have that trust because that's important. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Sweet? I got to ask you the same question. You guys don't even uh, have gonna to take ask cloud. me that question. You want to take Cloud. <laughs> it's Cloud's uh, big sword, I right? Mean, have you seen that guy do, do Have you seen thing? the size of that guy's oh my sword? God. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he would take care of all the predators, all the glitchy shabas, and the... <laughs> um, and yeah, either that or I would probably... Kind of, I'd kind of also probably want to take Will because, you know, he's been through it all. He's seen everything and he knows the island. So, mm-hmm. you know, he'd be, he'd be a good one as well. Excellent. So, yeah. Very nice. All right. Mel so, says that Mathis seems like a fun guy. He knows his shoes. <laughs> Obviously. Um. Okay, so basically my last question would be, um, what would you like to see um, in future versions of the game? Maybe? Um, it could be pretty much anything. Mechanic, uh, yeah, some kind I... of new badge, something like that. Anything. The only issue, One of the issues I have with the game is motivating me personally, myself, past on like a, a vanilla run like um i'd like to see them maybe split off uh have an option to split uh all the levels into 10 instead of five the skill levels and kind of alter the increases in between the levels uh because for myself once i've got like uh once i've got all the best in stock gear and uh you know I've, and 
I've got my bow or whatever and your cooking is at five you know it kind of it kind of loses it's hard for me personally to be motivated in like a in in just a vanilla run so I think you know having those skills um having an option to maybe make it let 10 levels or something to work towards uh the biggest personal pet peeve I have which I'd like them to remove is the fact that you don't get food poisoning at level five cooking i think it's way overpowered and it does make the game so easy um i personally would do rid of it uh the only other thing i had come up with previously is um is having an option to reverse your stats in some way so if you start out at say level five of all the all the skills um and every time you use a skill it decreases how it is and then it levels down or alternatively you have it set on like a, a time scale so maybe you start out at level five and then day 30 they all go to level four mm. uh, and then you know day 60 they go to three and then you're on like day 120 150 and you're on level one for everything because i feel like it would add a balance because as you're progressing through the game and you're getting more comfortable and you're getting the best gear in slot and you you know one of the biggest mechanics of being cold and things like that and being able to eat whatever you want uh just makes it so much more easier i mean obviously there's plenty of ways to die we all know that uh, i think you know being able to start out slightly easier but then you know how interesting it would it would be to be like okay you're cooking level one you can't just eat absolutely anything you don't get any bonus calories you're stuck at a 60 percent to light your fire it's not 100 percent. you know i think that would be an interesting interesting way of playing the game and making a, a long-term game more interesting um i think it would make it a bit balanced so yeah that's what i would go for i think Those. Okay. How about you, Cap? What do you want to see? Uh, I think, I think I would go with uh, fully random loot because I've never looked at a loot chart in my life, but I know if, if there's the Maglin's Mystery Lake Camp Office in the basement, there's a bedroll in the uh, Winding River. Like it's just it's set because I've had it happen to me multiple times. I already know it. It would make loot charts obsolete. I think it just make it a lot more challenging. I wouldn't mind an option of turning it on or off. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apologies. Puppy oh, still. Doggo, doggo. You're all good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the way the game is for the most part. I do, I do like AV's ideas. And then my other one is just the meat decreasing calorie as it goes bad. As it gets ruined. Those are probably my two my two biggest ones. Once you know that the loot spawns to an extent, you, I mean everybody knows there's matches at Muskeg. If but if is. but if I might reiterate a little bit on that, the the ran, the fully random loot, I am a little bit leery on that because you spawn in. It, what if you can't find matches for three freaking days? If it's that random, if it's truly random and you don't know where to find them, you can go to all the places and not have them not be there. So you can, right. you know, I, you I, could be a I run ender that. at that point too. So there has to be a certain yep. amount. What I'm thinking is maybe having static spawns but changing the locations instead, like <clears throat> like matches in a bedroll, That's like have them be there, but, but yep. maybe instead of them being like at a loot table, Maybe have them say, okay, they could be one of 10 places, and you have to go to one of those 10 places rather than, like you said, oh, if there's a hacksaw here, there's bedroll there. I don't agree with that. I, I wish that would change too, because that is a little bit too predictable. But fully random loot, I don't know if that would work either. No, oh, I, like, I like your idea better. That's kind of where I was going with it. Then. Right, like then you should spawn with matches if that's the that's the case. Because, like I said, you can have I mean, a spawn where you have... find matches right away, or you might find them three days later, right. and you might already be dead by like, then. Like I just think it should be right. map based. So, like, there's there's matches at the Musk gig. They're like they might not be at Spence's at the forge, though. Right, they're gonna be on the map, but they're not necessarily there. Yeah, that that'd be all right. I'd be all right with that because then you know you'd have to loot all the main locations for them. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know they're there. 
you know they're there you just gotta just gotta go and get them yeah yeah that would work yeah well in my opinion with the random loot thing is i kind of agree that if it were to be like a separate option to turn it on or off Mm. i mean if you're not finding matches for three days because you don't know where they are that's realistic it that's makes the true. game just that more real mm-hmm. um, because, you know, you're not going to just go there and be like, okay, well, I know that I'm going to get matches here, so that's where I'm going to go. But you don't know. You don't know what somebody's uh, had where. So, yeah. I, you know, I can see I can see that being a challenge for sure. And I think it, I think being it being an option would be fair. That that would lead to the thing about having an alternate way to start fires. Why does it got to be matches? Yeah. Why can't it be like? Why can't it be rubbing two sticks together? If I was in that situation, the last thing I would be looking for is a book of matches. I'd be looking for two sticks to rub together. That's how I look at the, the survival aspect of it, where you're stuck in the cold, you know, no way to start a fire, except for that primitive way of starting a fire, right? Or a bowl drill, yeah. something like that. I guess that's that would be... Matches is the biggest thing, in my opinion, with the game. I have a big problem with the match thing in the game. That I've always did. But That's actually one of the things that confused me the most, I think, when I first started playing, is I'm like, well, why can't we just rub two sticks together? Mm. I mean, that's a natural way, so why do we have to have matches? So I agree with that. Right. That's That would be actually be my answer of what I would like to see, is it some other kind of way, instead of having to rely strictly on matches, because... You know, once you use them, that's it. You're done. But there's other renewable resources you could do that right. could potentially, uh, you know, carry your run further, especially in the um, harder difficulties. So. Mm-hmm. All right, Tina. What about you? Um, Additional crafting, definitely. Um, yeah. I love what they've talked about and what AV and Cap talked about. I agree definitely with those, but I also agree with the additional crafting, um, more clothes, being able to make a drill, being able to make shelters, being able to make windbreaks, those types of things. I'm not talking full world crafting, you know, like building a cabin or anything, but more options of things that you would make with the materials that are already there. How about like a lean to, like a lean to. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would love to see the craftability expanded there. If I may add one more thing, I would love to see them put more in-game challenges in. They haven't updated those challenges. And since Dark yeah. Walker, which was three years ago, they need to put some wow, more in-game. Ch- yeah, already, it's, huh? they need to put some in-game wow. challenges in. They need to do some more of those. Agreed. Yep. Or make like, so. you know, part three to something or part two to something mm. else. Just something new. <laughs> part three to the Hunted because that ending on Hunted 2. Oh, no, yeah. that was not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously, I haven't played that yet, but I've oh. seen it. And I'm just like, oh, why? <laughs> I got the to the end of part two and I was like, that was the most unsatisfying thing I have ever done. Why did I play this challenge? I yeah. hated it. Beat it. <laughs> All that work, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Great. Uh, sweet. Uh, you can go ahead and answer the question as well. If you don't, if you'd oh, like that to. that was kind of my okay. like, my previous thing. Yeah. Gotcha. So. Cool. All right. Um, all right. So we're about to wrap up the last question here, and then we'll have a few minutes of Q and A from the chat, if and then we can wrap it up. Okay. Uh, we'll do our announcements. Uh, there's a couple of announcements that everyone wants to make, or I can make. We can do that real quick, too. Uh, let's start with the last question, which is to AV. Tell us about some other games that you enjoy, and, and can you give us a recommendation, maybe a personal rating on it? Uh, okay. So, um, very general. Uh, Fallout series is amazing. Definitely check out. Personally, I like three the best i think it's the best one out there but uh even going back to the originals if you're if you're an old school uh gamer you know 486 on the pc point and click stuff fallout one and two are great games the whole series is good um sweet will echo this one the final fantasy series if you like a role yes. play <laughs> you know cloud's obviously a bit of a sucker but seven is probably hey the- listen <laughs> um recommendations 
see we play really weird games so i would uh so cook serve delicious is uh the series is uh it's like a cooking uh it's a cooking i guess kind of like a button masher choices um game uh the whole series they've done is really good um uh, fourth one's coming out soon uh, i would recommend everybody play boyfriend dungeon yeah. um uh, a dating sim slash dungeon crawler is absolutely hilarious. It is the best dating sim out there. We've played a few. There are some really bad ones. Uh, but yeah, I would 100% rate uh, Boyfriend Dungeon um, as a personal recommendation. But yeah, I mean, I've been playing games 25 years. There's so many games that I love. Like um, It's uh, hard to narrow it down, isn't it? it is well, <laughs> it's kind of it. like what you're in the mood for at that time because there's so many right. different great games in different categories. It's hard to choose. And TLD is just kind of unique that there, there isn't really anything close to the experience you get with everything no. in TLD that I could be like, okay, you like TLD, I would recommend you play this. You know, if you like a walking simulator, something like, uh, is it, uh, Corey was doing, is it Watchtower, Firetower, something like yeah, that. Firewatch. Yeah. Firewatch, yeah, that's highly rated, kind of like a walking simulator. If you like uh, survival aspects, you know, something like Seven Days to Die, it's got zombies in it, but it's got great crafting, great survivability, uh, loads of different things you can do. That's a good fun game. Um, yeah. I mean, you can, if you can hit me up, if you've got a genre, if people want to message me, I can give you recommendations. But yeah, it's kind of like a wide spectrum. We We enjoy most different types of games. Awesome. Awesome. Cap? Uh, I'd probably have to say I have, a, I have quite a few hours in Skyrim. I always love Skyrim. Uh, other than that, I, I do like to play sports games, which are very, very generic. But I do like some off-the-wall games. I, I like to play a game called SnowRunner. Mm. It's basically a trucking simulator, but in very terrible weather conditions and uh, terrain. I wanted to try that fun. one. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it, uh, but I always, I always come back to TLD. Skyrim, really. I've played, I've, you know, of course, played the original Skyrim, and then I played uh, Elder Scrolls Online. That is a uh, that that's that's a lot. That's a lot to take on. That's more of one of those MMOs that's like Eve, um, games like that that are you got to have, have you got to be prepared to like that's your life. It's, it's your life, the way you play those games, and that's not my thing. Uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, I played a lot of games, just like AV. Honestly, the games that I think about that I really love are all older. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Nintendo. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that. There's a lot of older games I used to like to play on the computer, uh, like King's Quest. And I love like King's that, Quest. So. Oh my god, I love King's Quest. Yeah! Yeah, Mask of Eternity, hours, man. I love yeah. Mask of Eternity was my favorite, man. I love playing that. That was awesome. Yeah. Harry. Great. Okay, yeah. Tina. Oh my gosh, I've heard of Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> mm, Leisure Suit Larry, I I, I played that too. I, That's I a think great I game. played it in my twenties. <laughs> um. Anyway, <laughs> uh, my all-time favorite game beyond besides TLD is Zelda. But I, when I played games prior, I didn't get into as much as AV or Cat. Um, I did play Sims. I played Zelda. I played Doom. I played Diablo. Oh. Um, and then Duck Hunt was one of my first ever games. <laughs> Duck Hunt. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And that dog. <laughs> I love the right. I missed the dog. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That dog is a pain. I know, but I loved him. Mm. His little laugh. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... But since I've gotten back into playing games, um, of course, I really do like Seven Days to Die. I really enjoy that game. Um, I really do enjoy The House of Da Vinci. I love puzzle games, and The House of Da Vinci was a really neat one. Um, what was... There's a couple others that I've played that I really like. Um, Cult of the Lamb is one I'm currently playing right now, and it's pretty fun. Um, but it's kind of a cross between... Animal Crossing, which I never actually played, and Hades, which I've never played either. But I do find that I'm really enjoying dungeon crawlers. So I'll probably play some more of those in the future. Nice. So, so those are ones that I've actually played. Um, I'm currently playing It Takes Two, which is a really neat game too. But 
Again, it's only been like two years I'm getting back into mm. it. So I have several games that I have purchased that I really want to play or that I've watched people play that I'm very interested in playing and I haven't been able to play yet. Nice. Sweet, would you like to add to this? Yes. Sure. Um, so obviously you guys know huge Final Fantasy fan. So pretty much any of those games I'd recommend. Uh, another game I'm currently playing is uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, it's an online MMO uh, type game. Uh, it's got great story, um, a lot of uh, versatility, different characters you can play. Um, just something you can kind of get lost in, you know, for a long period of time. And uh, yeah, so those are the two big games I'm playing right now. Excellent. And then probably if if I want to really really relax and play a nice slow paced game, uh, game, then the Harvest Moon series, pretty much any one of those, is great. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard of any of those, but yeah, it's like a farming simulator Ooh, type game. Well, I'd yeah, probably like that. Yeah. 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 Well, because really, was... really fun, cute story. That's so. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, for me. Uh, I like simulator games. I play Farming Simulator, uh, Call of the Wild, um, of course, TLD. Uh, Subsistence is my new love right now. Uh, it's it's survival, just PvE, just like TLD. Uh, it's, you know, I like it because it has actual seasons in it. You know, so it's like you got to prepare for the winter and stuff. It's, it's a great game. It's one of my new ones I'm playing. Of course, I did like that feature. Yeah. when i watched you play it i did yeah, notice it's, that it's, it's a good different game seasons mm -hmm. yeah it's really cool and then it's of course it's got that, that wood chopping sound uh the song yeah yeah great awesome okay <clears throat> thank you so much everyone for that round of questioning it was awesome answers really had a lot of fun so what we're going to do is we're going to just we're going to take uh it's 11 o'clock so we're going to take just a few minutes for the, the the um chat to ask a couple of questions of each of us and then we're going to wrap it up from there so how we're going to work it is <clears throat> in chat i'm going to let somebody um put up that try to type something in chat type me in chat me uh, the first person in chat to put it up there on my count of 10 gets to ask the first question. You can ask the question of any person. All right. Wait till I say go. <laughs> you ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Chill. Chill. Chill is the first one. Chill, you get to ask a question of any one of the guests. You may go for it anytime you're ready. Also, hi, Chill. <laughs> Aw, Mel. Thank you, Mel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Mel. We appreciate you so much. Absolutely. And I, uh, I obviously wasn't there for the end of it because I had to get ready for the stream, but um thank you for your art stream today i had a lot of yes. fun watching you um i'm gonna go back to the vod to see the final um the finished with color uh, the gargoyle you uh thank that you fox you thank you thank you absolutely absolutely mel i can't wait to see it thank you so much for being here and for your commentary mel we love you i think we're waiting for chill to type in his answer his question. While Chill is typing in his question, I will take the next vote. Okay, so here's a question. Okay. So my question would be for the homie who played Elder Scrolls. It must be Cap. Uh, what race did you choose? Huge ESO fan. Oh, wow. It's been a long time. Uh, it was always it was always the archer, uh, an elf archer. I always played as an archer. It's part of why I love D2 because I love shooting the bow. Uh, and it was always uh, what's what's the group called? Oh, I'm blanking so bad. Now Elder Scrolls Online, I very I played very little of, um, but Skyrim, it was always always an elf archer, and I always did the uh, the Dark Brotherhood, which was like the thieving, the thieving one, so I could sneak around and do do all the thieving. Great, thank you, Cap. Uh, we're gonna do the yeah, next question. Well, well. 
we're going to count to five and so we don't have to do a 10. We're going to count down from five. The first person to respond in chat with me will get the next question. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Avatar. Lev, go ahead and ask your question. You can ask of any of the guests you would like. Um, maybe what we can do too next time is mm. uh, Fox also had a question, so maybe Fox can go after Avatar. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Yeah, I think Fox had a pretty in depth question. Bold to add the after. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation. Also, I know it's really, really early for you, Feld Alloy. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight and for your commentary as well. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Alloy. I appreciate it. Thank you to everyone. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Yeah. And while Lev is typing, okay. Okay, Tina, do you prefer Will or Astrid, or does it not matter? <laughs> oh, my God. I prefer Astrid. I Okay, I'll explain it once. <laughs> I, I cannot deal with Will's grunting. I don't like listening to a man grunt like that, except for one situation. That's it, period. <laughs> not going to talk about it any further. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> nice <laughs> nice you asked just to hear tina's voice <laughs> nice yeah it's like we all know that answer <laughs> okay all right we're gonna do uh we're gonna do we're gonna let fox ask a question and then we're gonna also do one more countdown so fox who uh can you repeat your question please and i'm going to do one more countdown for another question our fox put it in already oh, okay fox is ready i know what are the thoughts think... on the really barren scarcity of certain regions like bleak inlet where it's just so barren in places it seems unfinished not even six to be found are you directing the question to anyone or all of us i think that would be an excellent question for av to answer i go to bleak inlet <laughs> 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 I, I do get, I do get, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm to think back to about a year when I was last there to do tour mapping, but what Fox is saying, it, it, it is a region that does feel unfinished. Um, there is, I mean, it's called Bleak Inlet for a reason. There is literally 80% of it is a whole, not a lot of snow and ice and, and rivers and stuff. Um, maybe it's leading towards what's coming out in episode five what they planned long term you know maybe it's something that raf has got on his mind i mean i know the game is about um is about the story mode there's supposed to be five episodes that's what they've always promised bleak inlet is one of those i mean i've only been around for a year and a half in the game so i'm not an old schooler but my understanding is bleak inlet was one of those areas added you don't know whether or not raf has got he's probably got hundreds of ideas you know kind of spider webbed out not only just focusing on this is where the story is going this is the regions with the story mode he could be like okay well what if we what happens when the game's finished you know what happens when all five story modes are out um we can still add content you know that might be something in his thought you know it could be that he's put in place something in like bleak inlet that would then transition to another area whether it's related to the story mode or or not um that may be that you know that's the kind of the thought process i might go from it um it could just be because it's called bleak inlet so it's, like, it's bleak it's bleak survival is bleak it's bleak inlet. Like, like it's one of those areas on Interloper and Plus that is there's no real need to go there. Is there. there is like, no need. The big pull of it is the uh, whatever it's called that you can make ammunition and repair your stuff. Like fantastic on Stalker and below. No good to you if you haven't got any guns. Okay. Uh, and why? Unless you're sadistic, and I'm not that sadistic. <laughs> I, I, why do you want to play with Timberwolves? I mean, to be fair, at least they work properly as intended. But why why would you go through that hassle to get there's nothing special there in Interloper. Like even in Stalker, you get the flare gun as well that's available to you. 
uh, on the lighthouse. I'm pretty sure it's Stalker. It could be Voyager. Like I say, it's been a long time. But yeah. There's uh, a lot of wind he, there, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> sure, you got a lot of wind. Try to keep a torch lit in that yeah. place. Forget about it. <laughs> but yeah, it could be the, uh, you know, it's either that it's supposed to be bleak because they didn't want anything there, or it's a case of, okay, it's kind of like a, we can do something with this in the future, be it for story mode or mm. any other sort of additional content. Um, you know, kind of leave that back door in there if you wanted to do something with it at a later line. Yeah, it's a free dead wolf. Yeah, and dead fish. <laughs> Which, I mean, they've done. They've taken areas that were undone or have been in essential, seemed kind of useless and expanded upon them as they've added new regions. So it, it could very well be. It almost seemed like it was an afterthought or like it was just thrown in yeah. there to kind of you know, say, hey, we haven't had a new region in a while. Let's let's just put this in here. Yeah, it's not finished. We'll finish it in further updates or something like that. That could be anything like that. You know, who knows? Yeah. All right, we're gonna we have one more time for time for one more question. We're gonna do one more question. I'm gonna count down in chat. So the first person to put it in chat, me, will get the question. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. Packer. Me, Packer. Ask away, Packer. While well, he's typing, Fox and Chill, those are good points. Um, you're right, BlackRock does uh, seem a Packer's better. thinking now. <laughs> uh, he's got fake. <laughs> what do I ask? Uh, <laughs> come on, Packer. <laughs> I say, well, have, but you play Stalker, like, I love it. <laughs> I was yeah, going to mention one sense. thing. Go ahead. Go ahead, Give it to Failed. Okay, fail, Failed Alloy, you have your, you can oh. ask your question. Sorry, yeah, well, Packer. I, typing, I was going to say, <laughs> you were, uh, you were talking about that other game that had seasons, and I honestly wouldn't mind uh, a toggle switch for to turn seasons on and off. No, and that would dark. be nice. And it would make it very wild, because then you could to certain areas because the ice is not ice anymore. Ooh, yeah, FM. Mm. FM. Coastal Highway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Coastal. You'd have to yeah. swim out to the fishing huts. <laughs> yeah, like you're just... Okay, Alloy, okay. I don't know how they would work that. But... If there could be an item added, what would it be? I mentioned before, but binocular. Um... If there could be an item added, what would it be? And you mentioned before, but binocular? You mean binoculars? That would be kind of cool to add. Binoculars would yeah, be cool. We, yeah, we kind of went over this one a bit earlier in the podcast, but for me, it would be like a, a an ember carrier, something that you can mm, use a tin yeah. can for to to carry uh, uh, the last dying bits of a fire that gets yeah, blown Yeah, the floating out. fishing huts. <laughs> they were going to add a new item to it. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool to see a crossbow added. Ooh. You already had it. The good old Emmer can. Yep. No, don't worry about it, Alloy. Is that good? Are you good? Is your question satisfied then? Okay. Better a fire, fire starting like you were all talking about. It is. About. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Uh, sorry, you know, it's getting a little bit late. I would do more, but it, I want to start wrapping this up. Um, before we wrap it up, let's let's we're going to let everybody say if they have an announcement to make or uh, upcoming event or anything that they get, any of the guests want to talk about. Now it's time to do it. Uh, if anybody has anything they want to plug, now's your chance. Go ahead and plug it. Sure, I guess I'll go first. Um. Okay. Currently streaming or playing uh, probably the hardest challenge I've ever tried. We're doing uh, self-reliance, uh, attempting it on the goer setting. Uh, self-reliance, if you don't know it, is you start naked. You can't eat any old world food. You can't eat bunnies. You can't eat cattails. You can't use saws. You can't use sewing kits. You can't have any of the teas with the exception of reishi and... Um, Rose hips. Uh, you can't use a hammer. 
except for forging, uh, no bed rolls. Um, and yeah, we're attempting that on the go, which is no one gets out alive, which is like, I guess, pretty much almost one of the hardest uh, general weather settings. Um, that's what we're attempting at the moment. Uh, hopefully, if it gets fulfilled towards the end of the month, I'll do a Halloween stream, a special spooky stream. Um, I'm a part-time streamer, so the only times that I uh, you guarantee to see me stream is going to be on a Thursday or a Friday afternoon. I usually do both a Thursday and a Friday afternoon for me, which generally, if you are American, which is, most of you are, is going to be your mornings. Uh, I also try and do either a Friday evening or a Saturday evening stream. Um, I work nights, so when I say evening, I mean like starting 11 o'clock my time till like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning. So the evening for you guys. Um, if you want to catch that and see any of that, then uh, yeah, that's where you'll find me. Or if you want to help, you want help sleeping, you know, just stop on in. Yeah, 67 <laughs> of the people that come into my stream do fall asleep. So if you do have issues sleeping, you've got insomnia, you know, got a bit of a mm -hmm. headache, listen to this this <laughs> posh British accent, apparently, provided I'm not drinking. Uh, we also do drinking streams, but I wouldn't recommend I would avoid those. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else would like that? Tina, you must have something, don't you? Oh. He I don't have anything to talk. He definitely has something. Mm. If she's not going to say it, I will. No? Go ahead. Go no, no, it. let Cap go. It's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Cap. Oh, okay. no, I'm sorry. I don't have anything to plug. I was just going to say thank you to everybody that is in the community. They're all fantastic. And to make sure to watch AV, Tina Bug, and LD, uh, sweet, I, if you stream. Yes, she does. Well, anytime you I don't stream the long dark oh, wow. that much, but sometimes I do. That doesn't matter. You're all still fantastic people. And uh, LD is an amazing person for putting this on, and we appreciate him and the whole community. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Tina, did you have um, a plug? Yes. Okay, okay, go for it. And so for those of you who don't know me, I do primarily stream TLD, but I like to do variety Sundays. And... Is tomorrow Sunday? Yeah, it is, right? Mm, okay. It is. Anyway, <laughs> tomorrow we are doing a karaoke stream. It'll be our second karaoke stream. Ooh. Don't don't give me that face, AV. AV will be there tomorrow. <laughs> he's, you mean he's not doing his hair? <laughs> I mean, two whole minutes. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I have to condition each strand. It will take. Can a condition. Mm, okay. Okay. So. I'm still recovering, though, from COVID, so I probably will not be singing. It depends on how my throat feels and how after tonight. It's still a little crackly. AV will be singing. Uh, several other people in the community <laughs> will be singing. Okay, we'll be co-hosting it at least then. Um, <laughs> or he'll be shouting people out in chat, right? <laughs> anyway, um, tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central Time, which is also um, 8 p.m. GMT or london time so yeah but we're excellent. gonna have a lot of fun tomorrow it'll be just for a couple of hours and excellent um <clears throat> we had a lot of great we had a great time the first time we did it so hopefully you all can show up and come out and have a little bit of fun with us and we'll try and do we may not be able to do group singing mm -hmm. but we'll be doing just regular karaoke Nice. I'm excited. Well, I I did want to I did want to try it, but I, I I'm going to be working. Unfortunately, I have, tomorrow oh, is I'm my sorry. full day. I know, I know, I'm going to miss it all probably. Unfortunately, <clears throat> but next time if we have it again, I I definitely want to try it. I I guess I'll try it. <laughs> we'll try to do it on a not Sunday in the yeah. future. Sunday is the best day currently for me, I know. especially with if I have a Sunday off, which I don't see happening, because Sunday they always seem to put me on Sundays because nobody else wants to do it. <laughs> well, I'd like to do it once a month. People seem to really, really enjoy it. So once a month great. would be awesome. great. All and right, if cool. we can switch up if I can switch up days, uh, that would be even better. So uh, we might I might try to do that next time, do it on a like a Saturday or a Friday or something like that. Okay. Uh, I have uh, a couple of things and then um, we can start wrapping it up. I, I have my current 
I'm not my current, I uh, have a challenge. Everybody knows my Ashes of the Forsaken. I'm working on episode seven, believe it or not. Ooh, and wow. it's yeah. it's getting hard for me to come up with new ideas because I'm trying to make everyone different. And you know that the theme is opposites. You know, this one is about ancient and future, uh, ancient and present. So it's, it has to do with rifle versus bow and it has to be a lot about weapons. So it's, it's gonna be a good one. I have that one coming up and also I'm working um, heavily working on a new tournament. Uh, it's going to be a Dead World 2.0 tournament. I call it 2.0 because, and I'm not even going to call it Dead World because it's going to be my own thing. It's based on Dead World code, but it's even more so than that. It's going to be grueling. You guys are going to love it. <laughs> you're going to love me or you're going to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that one coming. Hopefully I'll have it done by Christmas or a little bit before that. I want to make it like a Christmas event. It'd be really cool to do, I think. All right. So if nobody else said, yes, new tournament, uh, it's going to be, yeah, I have, if anybody wants to put an ideas in for a title, I already have a couple in mind, but if anybody wants to put it, it gave me some ideas on a title, I would certainly be happy. And if anybody else would like to work with me on it, I have nobody nobody right now helping me on this tournament if somebody would like to come and work with me on it just let me know all right so i want to thank everybody for being here today i appreciate each and everyone sweet oh sweet do you have anything do you have anything to add anything to plug or and you want to say uh, anything i don't have anything super special going on as of right now but um i am nearing the end of uh my final fantasy 7 remake journey uh, probably got another stream or two left of content, so um, it's going to be bittersweet. It's going to be great to beat it, but I'm going to be sad that I'll have to wait, you know, for the second part to come out. Um, but I'm trying to decide on what game I'd like to play next. Um, might throw in a couple of community goal, you know, things to see what everybody's interested in, because I, I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Oh, uh, more to come on that for sure. Boyfriend Dungeon. <laughs> I will definitely consider that. That will probably yes. be going up there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, either either that or maybe one of the other Final Fantasies or something completely different. There'll be choices. All right. Uh, we'll see you anytime soon. Uh, I hope I hope to play soon. I do. Okay, no um, things have started to slow down a little bit at at work, so I do hope to to play here fairly soon. Yeah, that would be awesome. But I do. I, I mean, there's times I think about playing, and then I kind of get caught up watching other people play. So. Yeah. Well, I enjoy I enjoy watching other people play. So. Me too. Well, we appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, I want to. I want to say one last final word. Thank you again. I think everybody. The, the support in the community is tremendous. I mean, as we all know, it's some of the best communities I've seen. I, I haven't been to too many, but <laughs> the ones that I've seen. Uh, I mean, look, I've been in this community for almost three years now, so I've seen it go through a lot of changes. But it's so always been good. So I want to thank everybody, all the guests for being here. I just gave everyone shout outs. So uh, let's address the chat. Chat, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you so much for being here. We're going to send you off on a raid somewhere. Um, if anybody has a suggestion on a raid, go ahead, put it up in chat, and uh, we'll go ahead and raid them. I'm open for any raid tonight, wherever you want to go, okay? Thank you so much, everybody who was here tonight, everybody who oh, commented, and for all your your support and everything and i hope everybody has a wonderful evening i agree appreciate each and every one of you absolutely comes into the streams being here lurking just the general family feeling oh. of the PLD community is second to none uh thank you to ld and sweet organizing this it has been fun uh cap it's been a pleasure to meet you speak to you as well and you tina it's nice to finally meet you for, <laughs> <laughs> Have a conversation with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And AV, I all. mean, this is the first time we've actually, well, we played a game together, but this is the first time we actually, we've known each other for yeah, a while. It's the first time we've actually talked in real life. 
That's cool. Yeah, we're black, so you don't do that sort of thing. Yeah, no, that's true too. <laughs> and Cap too. Not, this is great. You're not pretty enough, LD. No, I guess not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not either, so you know, it's all good. It's cool. Uh, Avatar fan had a, had a question that I did mention. And I really should answer. I did mention in the beginning about the next podcast. I don't have any guests set in stone, but I'm working on trying to get Street OG in. I'm the also. I'm gonna get Street in. Uh, he already. I already talked to him a couple of times about it. It's getting him his busy schedule. You know, he's just all over the place. I also talked to Zach the Fiend. Uh, I talked to Zach. I'm going to try to get Zach on. I'm not going to get them on together. I want to make separate podcasts with them on. Um, but it will give a different insight to different, you know, kind of different nuance instead of having them two on together. Um, I don't have it set in stone. I've also would like to, I'm working on getting Wendy and Deadbug on also together. Very cool. And um, we also have a couple other uh, we have about five people that are interested in guests. I'm not going to say their names now, but those are the ones I'm working on for next podcast. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, Lev is on there. Don't worry, Lev. I got you on there. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, never, Avatar. I just never. don't know. The problem is, is I don't want to tell anybody who's going to be on it because I don't know how it's going to work. It's all about getting the timing done before I can't sit there and say, okay, Lev, I'm going to have you with so-and-so. But if the timing doesn't work, I can't tell anybody who's on until I know everybody's timing. So Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to try to work on Wendy and Deadbug uh, because of their time zones. And the next the next podcast will be on in the afternoon, so it would be early evening for the people in Europe. All right, so uh, you know some of you guys won't be able to make it, but and I might have to find a different co-host if I don't think Sweet's going to maybe make it unless I have it on the weekend. And the weekends are hard for me during the day because I work. Yeah, that's the only time that I really can't do I it know. is if it's during the week, right. in the morning, or it early probably afternoon. will be during yeah. the week. Uh, it probably will be during the week. I have I have uh, Zyla Takur's uh, would probably help me out um, or somebody else. But all right, until then, yeah. right? Oh, and I just want to read something. I'm so, okay, um, go ahead. Yeah. It, so you guys, it, you don't have to be a streamer to be a guest on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, if you play this off stream, it, it's okay. And you don't have to put your camera on. You could, you know, cause I, I don't have mine on you guys, as long as you, you know, you have a passion for the game, uh, you want to share your experiences, then, then by all means, you know, let us know if you want to join, we'd love to have you. Great. Thank you, sweet. Yep. That's exactly. I concur with sweet. Absolutely. Uh, I, I mentioned right from the get-go, this is not about streamers, it's about everyone. I would like to get some viewers on on as guests as well. That's all you Summer. need is a mic. You don't have to have a... <laughs> I asked no, Summer... I asked Summer's Summer, going to be a tricky one. I asked you know Summer why. the other day, and she ignored <laughs> right, my right, question. Right. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let her make the decision. No, she's going to come to me and say, Hey, I'm ready to be on, or she's then going to say no. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to bug her about it. I think we made a deal. I told her I'd be on, but she, then she had to be on. <laughs> and we love summer. Well, we get ones and we get cap back. Yeah. Or cap summer. That's a great Yeah. We get podcast. ones cap in summer. Summer will probably be on then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and street. I say maybe. Do it. And street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there we are. <laughs> all right so let me see who's on that we can raid let me let's get this going and here while you're looking aldi and sweet mm -hmm. thank you so much for this i do appreciate it and it has been a lot of fun oh you're welcome Absolutely. it was great thank having you guys, you guys so on being here it was yeah. awesome it was so great having you guys on and it's good to see you again cap and i guess you too maybe okay so we have <laughs> let me put out some names i have um slit holmes i have uh sophia's but she's not playing dark and long dark but i have sophia i have cool k but i don't know if cool k has his raids enabled he's been disabling his raids lately um can someone in chat summer could you please check with cool cool k and see if he takes raids please um tonight we'll give him a nice raid Summer and Sweet well, can't fine. be in the Sweet, same place. <laughs> Sweet just can't co-host that night, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I've 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 got to I've got to do my hair too. <laughs> <laughs> 
and hers will probably take more than two minutes. Just saying. You know, I'm yeah, just gonna go ahead. I'm usually there for a while. <laughs> we don't know that. Have you got hair? I mean, Black. true. We have no proof. True. This is very true. <laughs> I'm going to just start the raid for Cool K and see if it goes through. Okay. Sorry for razzing you, sweet. We love you too. <laughs> So you angels are a curse. Oh, he I'm sure raids. I'll be we are a blessing oh, and man. you love us. I don't want to hear that we're a curse. Hey, Serendipitous okay. Riot. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome in. Welcome, oh, welcome. Hey. Welcome. Well, all You're right. late. <laughs> all right. um, and I got Mel and Summer and Sweet all agree. Well, that you're paying to get no, that you love us. <laughs> All right, I guess we can raid Bab Babaginator. That we're a blessing, not a pain. We're going to raid Babaginator, I guess. Mel, <laughs> Good night, fangirl Mel. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I know it's super late for you, yeah. so thanks oh. for staying <laughs> up. Yeah. Absolutely. Good night, fangirl Mel. Have a wonderful evening. Sleep well. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna raid Babbage Nader. Um, if anyone could stick around for the raid, I really appreciate it. After the raid, you're free to go wherever you like, of course. Um, but if you can stick around for the raid, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. Sleep well. Take yep. care. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>